What is up, everybody? Let's shake it off. Let's wake up! What's up, everybody? All right. I may not be able to do a good live stream on logging, but what I can do at least guide the forces of good, which is the HRCC Discord, to answering your questions on ham radio. And that's what we're going to do right now. So thanks for joining us out here. This is all about answering questions, although we are going to dip into that subject topic. So today, uh, I had the right tool for the job. Okay, I, I went and did a poda, and it was raining, and I was getting rained on. The radio was getting rained on. I happened to also have a camera that was getting rained on. That camera, though, was slightly weather sealed. The the actual lenses had had O rings on it. Uh, I was out there, man, and so I, I I definitely did the activation you saw in Utah, which very cold. That was it. It was just cold, and there was some snow on the ground. That's that's not a big deal to me. And I've I've activated radio in the snow, like any actual snow. But the question is, I want to know from the people that are watching, and from our friends on Discord, is what is your hardest poda or soda activation? I can already tell you, you're gonna have to bring your A game because I think one K six A or K might be in the house. And I know, I know, he's literally activated in like a human tent thing <laughs> he's activated on the top of a soap before so you bring your a game on this one but what what the best part about this is is it's not necessarily that you had the worst environmentally impossible situation but but how'd you deal with it what'd you learn from it so that's what we're going to be talking about today so let's go ahead and jump into the discord say hi to our friends and uh and we'll get started all right here we go Always heard him referred to as because you're just knocking the fuse off to kill the wire so that you don't kill yourself when you go up the pole. Hello. But that, uh, oh, hey, that's Josh. How's Hi. it going? How's it going? How's it going, everybody? Uh, so, well, thanks for joining us on the Discord. Appreciate you hanging out in the after chat. I'll just dive in. Uh, let, let's see if there's anyone on the Discord, first timer, that has a question. Or would just like to say hi as a first timer. Go ahead, announce yourself now. We'd love to acknowledge it and and welcome you to the community. Hi, Josh. Long time watcher, first time to after chat. Excellent. That looks like a K nine IPP. How's it going, man? Uh, K nine JPP. Going good. Oh, J. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. Sorry, my uh, Discord a little small in the font. Got it. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm better. Well, I don't know. It's just, like I said, it's just been a tough week. I have to consider that like uh, not all of my live streams can be the greatest. This last one was not good from my point of view. And I've been doing it for years, though, and they're generally okay. I think they're serviceable. So the fact that I have one that falls off, you know, it's just what it is. And we'll work. We'll, we'll figure out what's going on. But... No, it's just been a hard week. It's just been a really hard week. So do you have a question or anything like that? Nope, just here to support. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for joining us. I do appreciate it. Uh, all right, who's next? I think it was Jordan B, maybe? Was that the next one I saw that was new? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Jordan from the UK. Hey, uh, I'm quite new to the hand side of radio communications. Uh, I've been a technical comms officer for... Um, nationally for St. John Ambulance for about three years. 
Um, so kind of like 70 centimetre, two metre is kind of my ballpark. But I've always wanted to kind of expand further into the more weird and wonderful side of ham radio um, over here in the UK. Right so on, it's man. just it's just one of those kind of things of getting into used to how it all works and then using your content and then translating it into UK speak and things like that of, Oh, okay. That's how that works. Oh, okay. That's how that works. So yeah, it's, it's been quite good. Um, I do kind of have a question. Of, I, I love it. I will uh, tell you, I will say just before you get started, you have a wealth of amazing UK content creators, including, DX Commander, you know, our friend, who who lorded me and lorded uh, one Mike Kate MRD as well. Uh, but RNL does really good videos. I'm oh, sorry, MLNS, MLNS, they, right, those guys. And then um, oh, there's a number of really good uh, UK hams that are on the YouTube. Um, but anyway, go ahead with your question now. So I was watching your video, oh, well, two different videos. One was on your, I'll go with the mesh-tastic question first. Where would you say is the best place to further understand the expanse of what Meshtastic can do? Honestly, it's to buy a couple of them and start playing with it. Buy a couple of these cheap, the ESP32 ones that are on Amazon. Um, it really, it, it's the same answer for radio, to be honest, is that you, you kind of have to start using it to really understand how it functions and how it works. It's like it's like to, it's like the driver's ed course. If you just only read a book about driving, you don't really understand what it's like to drive until you drive. That's kind of the reality of it from my point of view. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought. I've been, I've been having a look at some of the content, both from what the Metastatic guys put out across their platforms and, like, and as you said, like, like and things like that. So I have been picking up bits, but, yeah, that would be quite good. I've got a couple coming in the post. I've got a couple of the T-beams coming, um, so I'm going to have a play with those and have a, a, a gamble with those. And what the other question was going to be is <gasps> I'm really interested in getting to 10 metre, and it was kind of where would – what would you say – Without kind of going absolute to the ne to the tenth degree, mm -hmm. what would you kind of say would be the recommended way of getting into ten meter, if that makes sense? Uh, it, it depends on how much money do you want to spend. How much money do you want to spend? Um, so I've I've probably got about a thousand pound budget. So roughly one thousand. I think that's I can't, I can't do UK to US conversion in my head. My yeah, brain you, will fall out of my ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's um, good. Are, are you are you interested in doing portable radio at all? Or are you strictly want to be home based? Uh, what, so what are you thinking? I do want to go and do like pox on the air and things like that because we do have. Uh, it's not as massive it is as it is over in America, but it is something that is quite active within the UK. Um, but soda kind of, is think, very popular. Summits on the air is yeah, very popular. Yeah, because we've got quick because of the, how hilly we are. But it's one of those. But soda and um, parks and the air are, are kind of something that I am interested in, um, and it would be something that I would like to work my way towards. Mm -hmm. Um. So with with that amount of money, you could almost buy a portable, like a a Yesu FT eight ninety one would be a good portable option. Um, and that would do 10 meters. But if you just want to go super cheap, there's a number of just 10 meter only radios that exist. And then when it comes to the actual antenna system, you know, build yourself a dipole for 10 meters, and then you're going to be you're going to be great with that because they're they're small, they're not hard to build, uh, they're easy to get on the air. You can build yourself a you know a vertical that'll do 10 meters. Although in the UK, I don't know how having a low takeoff angle really helps you. You're almost better off with like a, a dipole. That's only like roof mount height, and you'd be able to probably talk locally to people in the UK as well as not too far off DX because your DX is is close, right? Um, I'm thinking. Yeah, that sounds. That's kind of what I've, the little bit of research that I've done into it. It's kind of only. It's always been an interest of mine for since I've got into comms ages ago, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, it's kind of it's only been in the last six months that I've kind of gone, oh, that's actually something that's like really grabbing my attention. Right. Um, 
but so it's kind of, it's been kind of a bit of a, a crash course in okay understanding like because majority of my because the cons that I do is more medical based we, yeah. we do mainly dive hole two meter seventy centimeter like single handhelds and it's very small like very small area like tower repeaters and things like that so it's it's just getting all that knowledge and now flipping it over to actually now you 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 don't need to think about the network as a whole it's just about yourself yeah so a couple of people in the chat are saying uh you could get yourself a used icom 7300 you could get a yesu 710 which is a newer sdr radio and then you can just build an antenna for 10 meters and you'd be like all set to go. I don't know what your plans are to advance into the hobby, but you'd get 10 meters, but you'd have all those bands that that radio can do that you technically can't do with your uh, with your first level. Uh, foundation, right? Foundation is the first level? Yeah, so we have foundation, intermediate, yeah. and then full. Um, they're very similar to your mm -hmm. technician, general, and uh, extra. Uh, really, the, main, the main difference is, is it's just our power levels. that, um, And then once you go up to intermediate, that's when you can then start using stuff that you've built over off-the-shelf parts is kind of the major differences. Right. Okay. Go ahead, comment. I'm thinking 7100 or 706. Like you were, or 991, because their privileges are different than ours. He just has to keep the wattage cranked down. Well, yeah. I mean, he, he would have to do that regardless with a foundation. I think you have to keep it under a certain uh, power output. But the capabilities on the back end are, uh, I mean, he... he there, there's a do couple you want of, a waterfall, or do you not want a waterfall? Uh, that's basically, a good question. That's what Josh yeah. is saying. No, no. I, I guess what I'm saying is, like, if if I if I were to if I were to do it again, I'd probably do exactly how I still did it. I don't think I would change anything. I still probably would have started with QRP because I I like doing portable, and that's that's what I did when I got started. Um, and that's why I asked the portable question because I know they're power limited in the UK, so having like even an 891 is kind of almost overkill and considering how close they are to literal DX entities being other countries, you could get away with a Shegu G90 and you'd be fine all the time, every day. So a Shegu G90 at you know $450, $500 for the bundle or whatever they're doing exactly that day would likely be fine. The 705, yeah, somebody already mentioned it. Thank you, Kwana. Um, the 705, the advantage of the 705 is that you get the VHF, UHF as well with it, which I don't know what D-Star is like in the UK, but I know there are, again, you guys are much closer, like, as a human species altogether in the UK than we are in the United States. So your ham radio VHF, UHF might actually be very, very good, even over simplex if you get your antenna up high enough on top of the roof kind of thing. Or UHF, who, who is that, Peter? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know enough about the world of the UK ham. By the way, Ringway Manchester, Andy Kirby, also highly recommend uh, UK channels. So, yeah. Uh, One more. Yeah, go ahead. That's great. Thank you. As an example to you, um, I got 17 meters. I got Italy from Oklahoma this week on 10 watts. So yeah. QRP is doable. Yeah, particularly being in the UK and and your proximity, your higher out, um, higher latitude. I I feel like you you get out pretty well, depending on what your antenna situation is like. You're of course going to battle RFI for your entire life. It's not an unavoidable situation. The same problem I have here in the suburbs, but um, I don't think you'd be underserved with the G90 and build your own antenna for 10 meters, get on the air, and uh, then you have some money left over to get a handheld, but it sounds like you might be okay in that area. Is that about right? Am I correct? Yeah, so I've got quite a few handhelds in the yeah. air because of my con stuff. Yeah, stuff. I had a feeling. So I, <laughs> I, it's one of those that it's like, like, like it, even to the point where I've got like three or four, just like both hands and things like that, that are just what I class as like kind of semi throwaway of radios for... Right. Because it means then I can just jump onto one of that one of the one of the business frequencies that we have through the organisation I work for, 
and I can just check stuff and, and have that because of being how senior I am within the comms department, I've got that power that I can book that frequency and have a play. It's quite nice to have a play around with kit, but it's then actually I want to be able to use what I've passed my exam for more, if that makes sense, and actually doing less of the, oh, this is just a radio test, and actually just being able to talk to people and going, oh, okay, I've, as you guys have said, it did delay um, possibly and and those kind of first things if that makes sense yeah it does and and i would i would use this time where you have these privileges that um your your work doesn't offer as a as a ham to get into things like aprs and other stuff where a more dense population is going to be way better for aprs and that type of communication so you'll you'll have a lot of fun with that being more of a high frequency guy at least from where you're at right now and andy Cowley, one of our our favorite YouTube commenters uh, from the UK is asking, uh, "Where where are you at in the UK?" Um, so I, I live in the in Birmingham uh, in the Birmingham area, so the West Midlands. Um, oh, that's so, kind so, of yeah. by Callum, right? Callum's from Birmingham, or at least around that area. Get yourself a DX commander. That's the answer. <laughs> Support our buddy Lord Callum. Are, are you yeah, subscribed like to Callum? Yeah, I, I, I watch, I've been watching quite a bit of DX Commander stuff because um, I, I just find his, his his tone and the way that he speaks just is just is just perfect. It's he's, like proper yeah. like top like British humor. It's hilarious. He, he's uh, got he's got so. a, a crunchy tone and the depth of his voice. It's just. It's so good. Like I just he he has a, a fantastic accent. Andy Callie's like, yeah, sounds like the Midlands. That is a thing that drives me like that is a thing that I don't understand because okay. Uh there's a bunch of TikToks that's talking about how large the U the, the United States is for people that come from the UK to, you know, if they're on holiday or, you know, traveling or whatever. You guys are so close together and your accents are so distinctly different and you can tell where someone's from from their accent. That's just I I can't do it, but I I can tell there's a difference. But the way you guys can pick up just where someone's from just by subtleties in the accent is impressive. And the fact that there's so much diversity there is very interesting to me. So here's something to blow your mind. So where yeah. I live, I live in the black country. Um, yeah. And and it's probably about a twenty minute drive from there to like what we call Birmingham. Yeah. Um. And the accent is con it's like the, you have crazy. yam yams and black country, and yeah. the accent is so different. It is hilarious. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so wild that people can be like you're only talking like twenty miles, maybe more, depending on how much. Uh, you can cover in 20 minutes but like that is insane that your accent completely changes it's wild so yeah very very fascinating well thank you for joining us i appreciate you hanging out all right thank you so much. yeah thank you jordan all right who's next anybody here new for the first time like to say hi or ask a question go ahead Well, hearing hello. nothing. Oh, we got we got somebody. Go ahead. Sorry. Hello, Josh. Uh, this is David from Ohio. Uh, hey, David. K E eight S X B. Nice to meet you. Hey. How we are had, you doing? Uh, we had a conversation once on WinLink back and forth when I was trying to set that up, and uh, just through the through the internet, but I was able to get it. Excellent. Working. I tested it, and you you came back to me. So. Excellent. Well, there, there's the proof you needed that it's working. Uh, so what can we do for you today? How are you doing? And uh, you have a question or anything? Uh, yeah, excuse me. I'm a little sick right now, so excuse me if I uh, I cough or something. But It's all right. I'm just sick in um, my head. <laughs> uh, I'm a technician right now. I'm trying to uh, study for general. And um, it might be a silly question to, to some, but I – for – FM and, and AM, I can understand uh, amplitude modulation, how how that looks on like a waterfall, and mm -hmm. and I understand how that how that information is is conveyed. I understand that okay. the FM, I don't really get it because you're stuck on that on that single channel. So mm -hmm. how um, I, I know that I know there's, there's you know, for si si single sideband, there's, you know, three kilohertz there to play with or whatever. But how how does the 
frequency modulation, how does that convey any speech or any other how, – how does that convey any information when you're still on that same channel the whole time? It doesn't change any frequencies, you know? Uh, right, but sound, it travels at different frequencies, right? The ah, uh, those are all different frequencies. It's it's a higher oscillation as I go up and down, right? So what if I express that in uh, in RF? The the modulation of sound in the form of frequency is going to be the higher oscillations and lower oscillations. One of the things that always uh, really just think about this, you know, this will really mess with your head. Uh, a radio, right? Like you have a you have a a boombox, right? Let's say that boombox has one spe boombox would be the wrong term, uh, uh, just a shortwave radio or you know, single transistor radio with one speaker. How does it one little oscillating disk, how is it that it can send and 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 move the air such that it is doing the bass line, the mids and the highs out of one speaker simultaneously? Think about that. Have you ever thought about that? How the the air around you and the and the the st structure of that speaker moving up and down at different oscillating rates at different parts can move the air in a way that you can hear different bass lines, mids, highs, all that stuff, right? Well, okay, now let's bring that to radio. So when it's modulating my voice at the different frequency patterns and whatnot. Let's just make it squiggle harder in certain ways to impart certain information. So I guess the higher pitch or the the lower pitch, it's doing the it's doing the um, that on different parts of the the three kilohertz single I mean, side band. It, it's got to do or... all of it, right? Because there's there's subtle. I mean, even in my in my human voice right now. So okay, let, let's do this. Um, uh, uh, no. Mm, oh, dummy load. We'll do it on a dummy load. Hold on. Okay. So if you're watching me, hopefully, maybe, we'll see. Where's my 7610? Where'd my radio go? That's fine. We'll just we'll just bring up the uh the empty screen here. One of these will have it. There it is. There's my radio. So if I if I take my radio here, right? If you're watching me on YouTube and Twitch, you should be able to see this in a second, in a second. Now, there you go. So if I go to audio and I am not well, and of course nothing is working tonight as it should be. So let me change this really fast to oop, that's not it. So now, hopefully, let's see. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. So that's that's me talking into my dummy load right now. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. And you can see all that expression on the right-hand side. Let's change it to FM. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Test, test, test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. And you see how the, the waveform changed on the top? You see that on the top? So look at yeah, all that it's extra... it's a little delayed, but I see it. Yeah, so all that extra stuff that's happening right now, right? I'm just going into a dummy load. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. That's all information that imparts all of that information, that detail. So let's, let's switch it to AM now. Let's look at it. We'll see it live. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. So you see all those little like devil horn peaks that are coming up on the sidebands and you still have that carrier in the middle, which is that deep red line there. Um, I can improve this a bit. Let's do, 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 do. Hold on. Oh, I got to go back. Do, do, do. Level. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to see it. Now, I appreciate you showing me. Let's see if I can increase this even more. Hold on, so we can get a little bit. Yeah, look at that now. Hold on, can we do 5K? Yeah, 5K is where it's at. Look at that. Now, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Look at the waves and the, the ripples, ripples. Watch, watch my voice. Ripples. 
high, low. Now let's do it on FM. High, low. Do you see that difference? Isn't that interesting? I think that's cool. All right, I'll stop blasting my... <laughs> blowing up my uh my uh my dummy load but I, yeah I, I see it it's a lot isn't that I understand where it see yeah. oftentimes visualizing it is the secret for a lot of this stuff but yeah i appreciate i've just been going through the book and that was something that i i could not understand you're on the number you're talking yeah. on the frequency but the frequency is the thing that's changing and putting out you know your information and i just i didn't so it's the, very hard to Google that. The, very the hard frequency, to figure that out. The frequency is the frequency is where you're like centering on for transmit. But then the mode it, mode is basically the operating the way you're going to modulate that information and how you're going to output it. And that's going to change how the, the technique of it is going to be different depending on what it is. <laughs> yeah, Dave, I was that was that was actually the highlight of the entire evening doing that in visual the highs and the low. <laughs> that was that was the highlight of the whole evening so far. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that helps. Does that help? It did. Thank you. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. All right. Let's do another call. Uh anybody new here for the first time likes to say hi or ask a question, go ahead. Hey Josh. Hey Josh. I saw hey, Josh. Enzyme first. What a great name, Enzyme. Hey, what's going on, buddy? I want to thank you first off. I've been watching some of your videos. Um, I've learned a lot. I'm addicted to ham radio. Uh, new new technician um, here, mm -hmm. and uh, just totally uh, loving it. Well, thank you for joining us out here. Appreciate it, and thank you for coming onto the Discord and being willing to say hi. Do you have a question or anything like that? Uh, yeah. Any specific topic, or do you is does it matter? It, I mean, radio related is preferred. I mean, if you want to talk about Warhammer 40k, that's fine. But um, otherwise, you know. <laughs> no. Yeah, sure. I actually I actually do have a topic. Um, I was watching your video earlier today where you were installing um, your radio in the F-150. Yes. And so I, I actually went out to a radio store today and I bought the FTM 500D. And I'm having a really hard time finding the best way to mount it um, in the under the back seat and run the wiring. The gentleman I purchased it from said a great way to do it is to go under the truck um, and then come up through the engine bay. Um, and that seems really complicated. <laughs> what kind of vehicle are we talking about? It is a 2022 F-150. Oh, okay. Then I can actually answer this one. Uh, did you watch my video though? And that does not seem like the way you want to do it or what was is... i i watched your video but it with it being electric i don't know if that was it's the you know, same mine body is not... it's the same body I have oh. same body okay. everything's the same so what, what type of antenna and oh, so you said so vhf uhf right yes it's okay. the vhf uhf yep so you could do so on the the right hand side is the fm antenna if you wanted to do under the hood on the left hand side use like a lip mount for a vhf uhf antenna that would be fine and then you could run the coax through that boot that is a pass through if you will uh in the in the driver's seat or spot and then you could just run the coax through that kick plate like i showed on the video like i ran the pyre, the power line Oh, okay, perfect. That's one option. Uh, you could buy that incredibly expensive diesel power uh, VHF UHF mount, which I really like, but it's incredibly expensive, uh, and that will do the job too. Okay, well, thanks, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, there was a comment too. Go ahead, comment. Uh, I actually have the same exact truck, mm -hmm. um, at, with the same exact radio as well as an FT eight ninety one. Um, and basically what I did was I bought the mount that Josh has, the power diesel, uh, one, like Josh said, they're extremely expensive, but they work very well. They're super easy to install. Um, on the 2022 F-150, you don't have to drill holes into the body either. Um, so that's another added bonus if you're worried about that. Um, and then I went through the boot on the driver's side. Um, for the power underneath, uh, right where the steering column is. Um, and then I routed the power behind the center console 
and then underneath that lip underneath that lip on the um on the passenger side um on the left hand side i put all of the power and the ethernet cables underneath that lip for like almost like a hidden setup and then i mount it the i just custom made a bracket and mounted it underneath the passenger side um and then for the antenna i routed it um through the back side, obviously, because of the, the mount, and then underneath the passenger side, and then I brought it out um, just behind the chair. So this way, the power's on the left-hand side, and the antenna's on the right-hand side, so there, you're not going to get any RFI or anything with the, uh, with the power cables um, being too close to each other. And then for the, um, for the 891, I got a k400 mounted it to the driver's side hood so it's away from the amf an antenna and then i just because the antenna cable so um so small for that k400 i did the power in the top right hand corner of the boot and then the antenna in the bottom left hand corner for the 891 and that all routes through the um through the driver's side underneath the driver's seat there you go. Oh, that's awesome, John. Thank you so much, man. I'm doing a um, yeah, storm spotting class coming up, so that's going to be really helpful getting this mobile unit set up. Thank you both. I appreciate you guys. Uh, there's another comment, too. Go ahead, comment. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, somebody had mentioned something about running under the vehicle. I do not ever recommend doing that due don't. to... Um, You've got exposure to heat under a vehicle, especially if it's not an electric vehicle. And then you also have the potential of anything getting kicked up by your tires, uh, damaging any of those cables under there. I would avoid that if at all possible. Yes. I would Actually, agree. I have a question, too. The only exception to that is a Ford uses a full boxed frame, and you have to run it in the frame to protect it. And that would be a difficult in it all in itself. There are way. By the way, um, a number of the manuals that it, there are a number of things you can download for the F one fifty, which I learned from a number of F one fifty users that started sending me all these PDF files that shows where all the pass throughs are, where all the holes, everything exists, and it was like, oh, this is a wealth of information. I think I linked to a lot of those in that video. If I didn't, I got to go back and do that because. Yeah, it's, there there are tons of options. Like there's pass throughs in the in the the bed. There's pass throughs in the cab underneath in the frame. There's all kinds of things you can do with the F one fifty. That's like I mean, think about it. It's a work truck. It's the most sold vehicle of all you know of everywhere. Uh, so yeah, anything you've wanted to do, someone has probably already done it. And there's a number of ways to make it happen. You just have to find it. Oh, man. Plus, every sheriff's department in the United States has, you know, yeah. a dozen of these. Right, right. I, I, I know we have a KI six QFI in the house. I don't know if he wants to chime in at any point, but if he does, he'll he'll jump in. But go ahead, comment. Oh, did uh, somebody say my name? Oh, I'll, I'll <laughs> let I'll let Shane go for. Uh, oh, you have any thoughts Frank? on the? Yeah, that was Frank. It is. Do you have any thoughts oh, on boy. the F one fifty radio install? Well, I can tell you from personal experience, I've done a lot of F-150s. It's a very common fleet vehicle. Right. And, and uh, the common place that I would run the power wire is through the boot. Um, In the driver's I side? Mean, the driver's side well boot? I ran it on the passenger side uh, for, um, I mean, because this is a fleet vehicle, they're, they're not going to really care. But the driver's side is a lot easier because you have a lot more room. The battery is on the passenger side. So on the passenger side, you have a boot, but the battery is like right in front of it, so it's kind of a pain to get to. Yeah. Whereas the so, driver's side boot is wide open. So uh, Shane is going to help me get the 891 back running on my truck, hopefully next weekend if we can work it out. Uh, you will you will be amazed at where the battery is on the on the the lightning. It's in the center of the frunk in the back behind a door, and I've added a fuse block to it. So we'll we just okay. got to plumb the lines, and it's going to be good. 
that was a really contradictive statement in the front and the back and the, the center side, yeah. side to side. Where the heck is it? It's got the fronts, the backs and the side to sides. No, it, so it there, there's a frunk, which is the trunk in the front. But then behind that frunk is a secret door. It's not really secret. You open up this pass through and the battery is right in the middle of it. And I have a fuse block uh, right next to it. Oh, okay. Good. Well, tell me, please tell me it's 12 volts, not 24. <laughs> oh, it's all 12. It's all 12. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. Ford's not going to mess around with that. I, 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 They do a lot of weird stuff sometimes, but they don't mess around with 12 volts uh, outside of that. Oh, I know. I've, I've worked on a tractor that was 24 volts, and we're like, where the heck, where, where are we going to put this thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. All right, Try let's go. Six volt positive. Let's go to Frank uh, for his comment. <laughs> Okay. Well, this is actually something Jody wrote in the Discord, and it helps. Uh, on most of his vehicles, he checks with the local car audio installers to see what they would recommend for cabling, especially for routing power from under the hood to the cabin, because they do it on tons of vehicles every day. And we'll usually run the cables for you for a small fee, too. So if you don't feel like running the cables and are able to pay a small fee, you know, whatever it might be, the, some of those uh, audio guys, you know, go to an audio shop and have them do it. That is a fantastic idea, Frank. The only consideration I will add to that is sometimes you don't necessarily want to run your power line with the coax line. That was mentioned earlier uh, as part of how you rig the whole thing up. That's not a bad idea is keeping those things separate might might be positive for you. Oh, that works just fine. And, yeah, and no, it wasn't my idea. It was uh, Jody. Yeah, no, no. And and um, Jody always has good, good ideas. Here's the point that I'm making on this. When you run... Okay, let me step back. Cars are a nightmare for radio installations, particularly when you get into HF. Alternators, uh, coil packs, all those things can be an absolute RFI nightmare that you'll be chasing little peaks and valleys the entirety that you own it in some cases. For some of you, you will have no problem whatsoever. So if you are one of those people that have problems with that, then keeping those things separated, got to keep them separated, is going to be a good idea if you don't know. If you don't know and this is like your first setup for it, then it's like, yeah, just keep them separated if you don't have a problem doing that. That's the point I'm going with. That makes sense? Hopefully, yeah. All right, uh, let's let's take another call here for newcomers, first timers. Want to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Hi, hey, Josh. This is Brian WD four DX. Hey, WD four DX four DX. I like it. Go for it, man. First time on Discord chat, so I'm still figuring out the uh, push to talk. You got uh, it. Sort, of like, it. sort of like my radio. It's just, it's FT8 all the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to thank you and I'm going to blame you Good. at the same Good. time. I've been a long time listener, long time YouTube watcher, long time podcast fan. Um, yesterday, I went to my local HRO here in Atlanta and picked up an ICOM 7610. Um, I've got a 7300, I've got the Yesu 710, and I just found that I need to stick with ICOM, um, and I much prefer that technology. So thank you, and uh, you know, my wife gives you the side eye every now and then because of me buying the 7610, but really appreciate it. Also, on one of your podcasts, um, you were talking about an antenna for under $75. Do you recall that? For HF? For HF? Yes. There was a, a person that emailed in, I believe, was asking about a budget antenna for $75. And uh, I'm sitting there listening to it in my Ford F-150, and all I'm thinking about is the spark plug antenna. And I was wondering if you have, are familiar with that antenna. I am. Uh, I am. And, I know that the QRP version is like 40 bucks plus the cost of wire. Um, and um, that's the only thing I could think of when you're going through the list of antennas. I was like, spark plug, Josh, spark plug. But, you know, uh, podcasts are one way, so I'm sure 
You didn't hear me from Atlanta, anyway. Yeah, right. Uh, no, yeah. So you're you're, you're right. The, the the spark plug is definitely an option. That's true. Um, I don't have one though, so I can't really say. Okay, let me say this. I, I generally try to only recommend the things that I've reviewed and taught and used. But I know that the spark plug has a ton of people that love it, and it it does great for them. So yeah, I would say sure, give it a shot because at that price point, it's it's not hard to get down with that and even have money left over for feed line, right? So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. So, but uh, thank you for everything you've done for the community. It's uh, it's an awesome community. Uh, thank you thank coming you. over to the HRCC in all forms. Well, appreciate that. It, it means a lot. So thank you for saying that. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break from the newcomers and, and questions. Don't worry if you're still a newcomer. By the way, we haven't even got to the YouTube chat. But I want to run down the list of uh, many of our YouTube creator friends that we have in the show. So, Bill, Ham Radio Tectonics. How you doing, man? Are you there, Bill? I know I turned I, – I lane shifted. It's always the guys right at the top. They're like, are we ready? Are we ready? All right, well, we'll come back to Bill. Rob, the Digital Rancher, how you doing, man? Hey, Josh. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, enjoying the show tonight. Uh, I really enjoyed the podcast this week, too. I love the reference to Red Dawn, one of my favorite movies. So one of mine, too. You had me, uh, you had me crying Wolverine uh, while I was driving the truck listening to it. Um. Yeah, so you know, as far as what I'm doing, I'm I'm obsessing right now over my new satellite uh, chest rig. So I'm working on an 818 rig to to do uh, linear satellites. I'm trying to do it with a single radio, and oh. uh, uh, I'm I'm also playing with an SDR in the config. So an SDR that I run on my phone. So. Uh, it's, it's given me some fits, but, um, I'm almost there and I'll be excited to, to share that with everybody and, uh, show how that works. So that's been my, my latest obsession. Excellent. Well, that's super cool. I will, um, I will want to see that because I am also one of the single 817 slash 818 owners. So running an, are you doing the SDR for receive? Is that how it works? Yeah, that's exactly it. I'm using the SDR for receive and, um, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to separate the two meter and the 70 centimeter. So I'm not desensing that, uh, that SDR. So I've been, you know, trying a bunch of different filters, trying a couple of different antennas. Um, and then also uh, trying a lot of different memory configurations to aid in uh, finding your downlink single, uh, finding your downlink signal, mm -hmm. uh, because that's always the challenge in, in the linear. So, right, interesting. So, I'm, and it's I'm... cool having a um, you know having a, a waterfall too to help spot those signals uh, on the transponder. Yeah, I'm kind of curious how that's all going to go for you. I'm I'm gonna have to to watch all of that because that's that's an interest of of mine. Is so uh, are you using like a diplexer? What kind of antenna are you using? So I started out with my elk uh, because I love that elk antenna, and mm -hmm. I, that's what I use for FM birds. But I you know having both of those um, signals coming back into I, I tried a diplexer was not able to get uh you know everything i tried still desensing the really? sdr yeah I, I i don't know if it's just too sensitive it's just too close um, yeah yeah just too close right so uh so i picked up a arrow antenna right because you have a different feed point for both the 70 centimeter and the two meter and that seems to have done the trick in terms of, uh, you know, not desensing the receive. So um, I, I think that's going to be the ticket. Uh, I've also got a couple of inline filters, and um, yeah, that's uh, it's it's you know it's been like a month now, just driving me crazy. I bet. Yeah, that could be frustrating. Well, good luck, and we'll be uh, waiting to hear the results of, of your testing there. Right on. Thanks, man. 
appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Thanks for uh, thanks for the shout out tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Next is uh, Frank. How's it going on, man? Oh, good evening. Well, I'm finally up to the point where I might have a video out next week. Uh, probably Friday or early Saturday. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's uh, going back to like <laughs> the end of October almost. But hey, a video is a video. Uh, I have a couple new toys that uh, I'm going to be doing some videos about. Uh, <clears throat> Somebody decided to reach out to me again and send me an updated toy to play with, and I'm going to leave it at that, and we're going to see what happens, and I'm probably going to do a few more live streams uh, in March, hopefully, and with Jason's, I'm not going to say approval or blessing, but he, he was agreeable, Jason uh, Ham Radio 2.0. Uh, I am going to help and try and coordinate some of the newer YouTubers and scheduling based off of the calendar he currently has of all the OG guys like yourself and Lord Mike and Lord Callum and everyone else so that none of us newer guys uh, inadvertently step over anyone else with our streaming. And I know there's pop-up streams and whatnot, but yeah. the more established things like tonight uh, – I, I see a couple others that are live as well currently, and, I mean, it doesn't hurt or harm views for you, but, you know, they could have more people if they weren't streaming at the same time you were, for example. Yeah, that that's, so. the, that's the point I would make is that, like, for the established guys, you know, we're just going to kind of do what we're going to do. We don't really look at the calendar at this point, but for the folks that are, you know, up and coming and, and starting out, then they should probably deconflict where they're at. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that would I help mean, we them. all have our own. We all have our own crazy schedules in work life balance as it is. So sometimes jumping on a live stream, you know, you have to. It is when it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm gonna try and work with some of them, you know, because I'm a newer guy too. I have 199 subs currently, so you know, I'm getting there. Uh, but some of them, you know, so I'm gonna work with them and try and get. Uh, a lot of us all on the same page so that we don't interfere with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love that. I think it's great. Um, it, it, believe me. So everybody, everybody watching, there's like, there's ebbs and flows to create like new creators coming out there and, and people making stuff. There's a lot of lone wolf folks that just kind of do their own thing, which is, you know, fine, more power to you. But um, all the, the YouTubers like that, you know, um, that are, kind of out there, you know, Ham Radio 2.0, Mike KMRD, Ham Radio Tube, uh, Jason Cam4ACK, tons of those guys. They're um we started out doing a lot of deconflicting our schedules so that we weren't stepping on each other. That was exactly our goal. And it's now at the point where there's so many people out there in amateur radio where they're just all going live at the same time, which by the way, totally fine. Go nuts. That's awesome. Um, just, you know, for your own sake, for getting a kind of footprint, it would be nice if you could lay down a spot that might be your spot that you can start working on and then build the community around that. That would be my recommendation. And, and that's what I sort of want to expand upon with Jason's calendar and try and work with, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm a small YouTuber, but I'm I, I'm active, active in the community. So I, I think I have a, a good foothold and a good idea as to what's going on and the vibe of everything so right i'm going to be reaching out to some of them and going hey you know we have this great calendar of the more established guys and i'd like to try and see if we all work together to uh get everybody on the same page so that we're not overlapping with each other yeah. i mean it It'll happen, you know, once in a while due to schedules, but, you know, I've seen a trending pattern here, and I want to try and fix it because, you know, you, you get more – you get more better results with uh, sweets than you do something sour. You know, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar type of thing. Yeah. So that's what I'm going for with and, that. And I, that, that's about it for me. Yeah, and I hear you. I, I think the point I would make is that, like, uh, take no offense if we're on the same time you're streaming or we're doing the stream at the same time you are. It's not any offense needed there. We're, we're, we're all just trying to just use the time, I think, effectively. So if... If they're live streaming the same time I'm live streaming, I'm not taking offense at it. 
uh, don't worry about it. You know, do what you guys got to do is fine. Um, but yeah, you know, if we can all work together, great. That's, you know, what I would aim for. Exactly. But that's it from me. So I'm, I'm actually going to have a few more videos finally coming in March. Right on, man. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing that. I'm glad you're out there. And I'm glad you keep going, doing what you're saying. Uh, can't, I mean, I, I, I will say I'm still team uh, rail, rail fanning radios, but I, I know a lot of the, there's a lot of moto, moto fans in the house. I think you can do both. So consider doing that. <laughs> I, I, I use Motorola I, radios for rail fanning. That's easy. Oh no, could, no, yeah. not, not, not that, Shane. It was, uh, I, I put out a poll across my social medias that Shane must have missed. You know, what do you want to see more of? A uh, series on railroad that. radio and okay you did so it came out about 50 50 so i'm putting together a series on each but i'm going to focus on one first and then the other and uh shane you and i might have to have a conversation about the other one yes oh, Con boy. converse amongst yourselves there you go all right we're going to move hey, on to Josh. tim oh go ahead go ahead shane what i got a comment yeah man i just booked my flight to dayton nice nice <laughs> Okay, all right. Where are you staying? I uh, don't. I haven't. I yeah, don't know where I'm staying just yet. I was, I was trying to. I texted Dennis to see what he's doing, but he's coordinating with Chuck. About okay. Airbnb stuff, but try, I'll be uh, uh, flying into Columbus. Try and ca yeah, see if you can work with somebody and get like a room. Uh, a lot of guys do Airbnbs now. There, there's not like a good so. When you go to Huntsville, Embassy Suites is the spot, right? You you went to Embassy yes. Suites. That's the spot. Uh, when you go to uh, Orlando, nothing's really good, so we just stay at the cheap one, which is the you know the the Rosen Internet, oh, the, the Rosen, Rosen Inn on International. And then uh, when it comes to Dayton, it's kind of like the Wild West. I stayed at Beaver Creek one time. I stayed somewhere else, and now I'm doing the Airbnb thing. And to be honest, I really do like the Airbnb way to go. Uh, it ends up being pretty sweet just, just as long just, as the house is not foreclosed yeah i was gonna say correct. Just don't pull a chuck and get the foreclosed house correct yeah <laughs> correct indeed that's that's the right answer so right on okay now yeah, we're gonna feed me that's all go ahead what all right. all right i just saying with the condemned house uh that's not graffiti that's art no, in this case, it was like a full-on, it's a long story. You have to go back and watch last year's Hamvention if you want to know about that from the uh, from the Toads boys. Anyway, uh, Tim, Gray Man Pote is next. How's it going, man? Oh, doing good. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, have, having a great time. I uh, ended up picking up a uh, 705 after oh. uh after uh, hamcation Damn. and uh, been been enjoying that and doing some videos with that. How do you uh, like it so far? Seven oh five time. I I like it and I and I tell you part part of the reason why I really wanted it was the familiarity of it with the seventy three hundred and and being able to you know it basically have an identical radio just different functionality. I got a comment on the 705. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, do you know, So, Josh, you know Rob at HRO? Yes, I think so. Oh, wait. He's a really, really tall guy, the son yeah. of the owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, so, yeah. Robert Jr. Yeah. Yes, that one. Yeah. So I, went, I was there yesterday, and he got an email yesterday from ICOM saying that they re-released the 705 like they did the 718. Wait, they're re-releasing the 705? Yeah, I guess they had some sort of component supply issues or something. What? And oh, the, oh, component. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is what Rob informed me. He said he got the email that morning, like yesterday morning. Really? Interesting. That might be just a, a that's not a feature change. Oh, somebody said no. thanks, Josh, in uh, in in FTA. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Look at my FTA. Well, look at this. Look at this. This is all the stations I'm hitting. Those pink lines. I'm on thirty meters right now. Thirty meters is insane right now. Well, insane. That's because all the other bands are contests going on. No, not FTA. Not 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 those. Not on FTA. Not right now. But oh, look, true. thirty meters is hot. Hot. Yeah, I've always found thirty meters hot. 
Yeah, man. Even during, even when the the bands were dead, thirty meters was where it was at. Thirty meters, dude. And I I'm, get so much DX I, on thirty meters; it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I've noticed fifteen meters this time of night has still been very well going into Europe from out here, and that's just with my inset. It'll get better. I am. Uh, hold on. Uh, let's see. So I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally coordinating time for a summits on the air activation tomorrow. <laughs> Any chance right? I could sneak a question in? Yeah. Hold on one second. We got, we got two more YouTubers to get through and then it's back to questions. Don't worry about it. So let's go to gray man. Hoda, how you doing, man? I oh, actually three, but go yeah. ahead. First time caller, long time listener. Oh no, you already did. God damn it! You, you mentioned the seven hundred five. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez. Next is K six A R K. How's it going, man? Uh oh, it is going pretty good. Uh, the uh, the mountain rescue recertification this weekend was canceled, so I'm home and uh, got some uh, some shop time in. I. Uh, Figured out and fixed the issue with my KH-1. I took uh, my new KH-1 out to its maiden voyage soda activation up San Jacinto, uh, what was that, a week ago or so? And uh, did a little ski trip up and down the peak. And on the summit, I was noticing that the uh, the short random wire that I was using was kind of, it was like intermittent high SWR, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. It seemed like something was loose with the BNC jack or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I emailed Elecraft to see if it was a common issue that they could point me in the right direction for troubleshooting or anything, and they were like, no, it doesn't sound familiar. So... I kept tinkering and digging around and trying to figure out what was going on with it, and I figured out that it wasn't necessarily the BNC jack that, that was causing the problem when it moved. It was actually the back cover, the oh. aluminum back cover of the KH-1. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, it's like, well, why would that make a difference? Well, here's why. The 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 way that, that cover is built... Um, it's uh, sheet metal that's bent, and it's got a, at one end, it's got kind of a, a little tang that's bent down slightly and then has a hole punched in it for the hinge, so it'll kind of hinge open from one end. And what was happening was that when the cover would slide in the, like, just a millimeter, millimeter and a half, away from the BNC jack end of the radio that little tang on the cover would come in contact with one of the toroids on the, the ATU board, on the tuner board, and it would completely throw off the SWR. So <laughs> Wait, you don't have the so, pad. Do you have the pad? The battery pad? The, 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 I have the battery pad, but the, that doesn't cover the tuner where the tuner goes. You're talking about the cover that's like screwed in place, that's, that slides over the top, not the folding battery pad. Uh, the, the battery cover no the, the 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 folding battery pack cover but i'm not using a battery pack so so maybe that's part of the difference too oh um, i'm using a much smaller battery right so so i suspect if you use the standard battery it probably pushes out on the cover and eliminates the problem but anyway the the fix was easy all i had to do was take that push push that little toroid down a millimeter or two you know plenty long magnet wire there and it was yeah. just twisted a tiny bit so that it was sticking up further than it should so i pushed that down and now everything seems to be working right so did you have a failed activation but, then uh, over that no no i was i was able to to get everything to work well enough um but i i had kind of intermittent issues so, so how, how do you um, I, I still made still made a bunch of contacts what's your what's your uh, field report on the kh1 so far so a couple things. The the stupid little whip antenna is way more fun than I ever expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's high solar cycle, right? So we can get away with nonsense. But no, it's still good. It's still good. Yeah, it, it does fine. You know, the, the counterpoise is most of your antenna at that point anyway. But, um, but what I actually did and what I will likely use a lot more 
I built one of my kits um, as a four to one on un and attached 15 feet of radiator and seven and a half feet of counterpoise and it tunes on every band at about 1.2 to one or less. So that's a pretty dang small antenna to just, you know, take the end of the wire, hook it onto a shrub or a tree and walk 15 feet away, toss the counterpoise on the ground and be able to work 40 through 15. So that's most likely what I'll end up using the most. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. For the end so you're still going to go NFED. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean it's it's a I mean it's not quite NFED. It's it's technically an off-center fed, I guess you could argue, because it's seven and a half feet and 15 feet um and a 4 to 1 un un, but uh but you know, hey, that works. It tunes on all the bands and does pretty well. So That's awesome. Beyond that, uh time in the shop had time to tinker with a few other things including my prototype pressure paddles for the kh1 i've been staring at five of them right here uh that are and need some 3d printed covers to send a, a few friends for testing before i uh try to get a batch of these things made but they they seem to be working pretty good and they're pretty fun to use and then the last thing that was on the workbench today i'll post some pictures in the chat I added uh, an internal charger and a USB-C port uh, to feed my little 650 milliamp hour battery that's in the KH1, and uh, that seems to be working. I've got it charging right now, and all seems well. Excellent. Well, hang tight because we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be coming back to you for uh, for likely the the show question of the day. What is the hardest? Poda and soda that you've been through, and I know you've got some of them. So you, you oh, point. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a got a good one, a couple of good ones for that. But yeah. um, what one other note on the YouTube thing? I'm actually uh, I uploaded a video yesterday, and I will publish it. Uh, I'll put a premiere sometime tomorrow morning. Um, it's a local soda activation uh, with Chris N one CLC and the MTR five B. And um, so I did something fun with this video. Uh, the, the regular video is about 16 minutes long, kind of my typical soda activation video. But before I trimmed it down to, you know, uh, edited all the contacts down 15 total minutes, um, I actually went through and uh, did captions, Morse code captions for oh. all of the activation. Oh, man. So I'm uploading a second version of the video that's an hour and 20 something 22 minutes for those that that want to use it for cw practice so um I so do. we'll see how that goes see if people I want like that. it and use it so, yeah, you, you, yeah you made a you made a video for cw noobs is what you're saying pretty much <laughs> yeah i like it i like it helping the other sounds helping the people cool. that's awesome sounds very cool all right, so next is Mark, the SDR recording device guy. That's not the correct. Uh, you, 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 Mark, wait, what's your channel? What's your channel? It's Boondock Echo, baby. Yeah, and we've that... got five, five days left to go where you can be in the first batch of the Boondocks. After that, you're going to have to wait. So if you haven't ordered one yet, go to the website, go to Crowd Supply. Bye, 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 baby, bye. Just don't tell your wife. If you want, I will make you a fake receipt. No extra charge. All right. Uh, so Frank does an amazing job. He does a great job. He sends me a message like of YouTubers in the chat, and I occasionally reference it. And I was like, I like Mark. Who's this Mark SDR recording guy? And I'm like, oh, Mark Hughes uh, yeah, is, yeah, is, my... is Moondog Echo. That's not <laughs> I thought it was a different My, my apologies. <laughs> no, you don't apologize. You, you're already doing amazing stuff, so don't worry about it. Don't I, I, worry. I'm you're laugh, good. I'm, I'm, laugh, I'm, I'm laughing over here. I'm good. <laughs> you're killing me. So hold on. Hold on. Let, let's go back. So Boondock Echo, I don't want to go to... Uh, let's get off the login for a second. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's it. So crowdsource funded, 375% funded. There's only 13 left before it's gone. You should go watch my video. Uh, and it, basically, it goes through the details of it. This allows you to record, right, for, for useful purpose, purposes after the fact. Almost any radio you hook into it. 
What I use it for, or, you know, is for connecting to a scanner, and then it emails my wife if certain police codes are heard throughout the day, and then she can upload that to her Facebook group for Neighborhood Watch, which makes her the she, everyone is jealous against all her amazing scanner capabilities, and it's because of the Boondock Echo. So there you go. <laughs> now, I want to show you um, our developers have been working hard on voice recognition. So I just shared a sample file that came out of last night at about 10 p.m. Right, so if go. anybody wants to click it and listen to it, and then here's the translation coming we'll, up next. We'll do it live. Do you want to, what are we doing? Oh, what are you, you're, you're posting something else? Hold on. Yeah, no, 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 no. Do it live. And okay, we're I doing it live. The translation. Here we go. It's going to be a bit delayed for everybody. Oh. Oh, you're okay. I got it. I I understand what's happening. I get I get things. The internet. So we're downloading that. Hold on. All right, let's open it. I, I heard best thing in the world. That is a high RFI environment. Okay, we heard that. Now what? What were you able to hear? What were you able to pick out? Uh, I heard best thing in the world. I That was about it. That was not good. That was not a good copy. A lot of cracks and popples. Pop, popples. All right. Now, I wasn't able to hear it on my end uh, when you were listening to it. I don't yeah. know if that's just yeah. you. But this is what AI came up with as the translation. Is it accurate? You might have to listen again. I have to say, I'm getting my banana bread from Costco. I don't care if I take a question to get it. Eh, it may not be accurate. I'm going to get one. There's the best thing in the world for coffee, man. You've got to just cut off a hunk of that stuff. Banana and my bread, guys. Oh, man. Let's put a cup of coffee in living large and keep eating it in in the living large. I mean, there, there's definitely a lot of words in there you hit. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so for anybody who wants to listen to it versus seeing the thing, this is, I would call this completely uncopyable audio. Yeah, I, it, no it's, I heard best thing in the world. That was the only thing I copied from the entire thing. But once you read it and you listen to it, you can yeah. start picking up a lot of pieces. Yeah. It's definitely decoding below the noise floor. I like that, Jody. Well said. That's very impressive. Yeah, cool, and then man. other times it just makes stuff up. I don't know what to tell you. Well, yeah, sure. It's AI. It's It doesn't want to not tell you an answer, right? Because then it'd be like, they're catching on to us. We don't know what we're doing. I'm just kidding. AI's um, all right. And then in other news, we're, well, we're still working on this one. We're working on Boondock version X. You know, we haven't named it yet. Um, we think we're going to be able to be able to hook up two radios at once on that. It should have the processing power to take the left channel from one radio, right channel from another, and uh, turn this into a little mini repeater thing. Two radios at the same time, man. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. That is Mark Boondock Echo, a great device. You should check it out. <laughs> right on. All right. So, Hiking and Hammond, are you are you on comms? Are you you're in the chat, right? Are you out there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, man. How's it going? You got a YouTube channel? What's going on with you? Well, I am uh, I am back in Alabama, uh, and and. Adam didn't mention it, but I got to give him a huge, huge thanks for uh, coming down to Silver Strand State Beach and activating with me. And let me tell you, 10 meters was on fire. I'll have a video forthcoming in a couple of weeks. I got to finish wrapping up a work-related thing that's eating a lot of my time right now. But uh, a week or 10 days, I should have a video out on that. But uh, 10 was on fire, and the, the spoiler I'll, I'll give there is that 116 contacts in I think about uh, two hours or so. Uh, is that what you'd say, Adam? Yeah, that sounds about right. Wait, where did you guys activate? Where were you at? Silver Strand State Beach, uh, down uh, between Coronado and an Imperial Beach. Oh, okay, okay. He was. I was like, Adam was in Alabama. <laughs> What's going on? Right on, man. That's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had to take a a work trip out to uh, out there to SoCal, and uh, I, was, I was out there for a week. Oh man, that's awesome! Are you doing half the mic? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, we were doing past the mic, definitely, but uh, it worked out well and uh, had a little park ranger visit briefly, and uh, like I said, video forthcoming on that, along with a couple other activations I did while I was out there, but good to be home and uh, good to be about to wind up this uh, work thing that's been eating my time for like three months, and uh, I'll get back to putting content out here real soon. Yeah, what's funny is you you pack your weekend full of time, and then you wake up on you know Sunday morning, and you're like, oh god, I I plan to do so much stuff, and then your Sunday ends, and you're like, oh god, I didn't decompress, and now I have to go back to work <laughs> from the very thing that you were trying to avoid. That's what I feel like right now. Oh my goodness, oh, tough week. Well, all I all I have to say is, do you did you even have a successful boat activation if you don't get visited by at least one park ranger? Uh, the park rangers cruised me a couple of times. They didn't stop. I had a local stop though, and I I didn't have my cards or anything on me when he when he stopped. And by the time I, I packed up, he was he was already gone. Um, so I, I wasn't able to hand it off to him. But yeah, no, I keep like cards in my pocket, like mention my YouTube channel, what I'm doing. It was cool. It was it was a lot. Of, I mean, it was raining when I was out there. That's why I was thankful that I had the QRP station. I was the radio was literally getting rained on. I'm getting hit. Everything's getting hit. It was it you was still fun in your though. Truck? No, why? I live in California, Shane. I live in California. Even when I'm in Utah, I I go outside. I I'm an outside <laughs> kind of portable operator, man. You saw me in Utah. I just did it. I just did it because that's what you got to yes. do. You just gotta you gotta hey, be outside. I, I outside in Alaska. Now, by the way, now once you <laughs> now with all that said, once we get the eight ninety one back in the truck with the ATOS on the bed. I will definitely just be shape. activating parks from inside the truck. <laughs> yes, he'll be but, in good shape. By then. But when, but when I'm when I'm doing like if I'm in a review uh, like an antenna, I got to do it outside. I got to get out there. I got to touch everything. I got to do all the stuff. You know, I mean, like what antenna you, was that? You know, I was the hex antenna from Alpha. So I did the vertical oh. uh, configuration. By the way, you know what? I'll, I'll here's a little spoiler alert for the video. So let me let me go back to uh, check this out. This is kind of cool. So if you go I to heard, Whisper, I heard you. Yeah, dude, I was killing it out there. So check this I, out. I heard you on seventeen, but I was in my mobile and I barely heard you. But in I in heard, fact, uh, I gotta I gotta do this because uh, if I don't do this now, I'm I'm gonna forget. And I'm, so this is this is uh, how I got out on uh, five watts. Okay, this was five watts on uh, the different um, alpha. So it's alpha hex tena. But I did a, a whisper transmit on the dipole configuration and the vertical configuration. This is how I did on five watts. Got all the way down to VK. This is on 17 meters. This isn't even mm -hmm. like I didn't change a bunch of bands. This is just 17 meters. So this is where we go to the database. Got to do that now. Let's go ahead and do oh, wow. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Really, really good. I was very impressed. Uh, Ki six naz boot to boot to boot, and old database, please. Thank you. There we go. So now we'll copy all that. Uh, is that it? No, that's not it. Hold on. Search by call. Ki six naz. Josh has to do this now, or else. Uh... There we go. That's all the records I got that whole time today. So let's copy all those. Yeah, buddy. Got to put that in a in a. No, oh, I did it wrong. I'll go this way. Were you using your seven hundred five or something else? Uh, no, I was using my QDX, my uh, oh, QRP no. Labs QD. Okay. That that I grab that for whisper testing now. All my whisper testing generally goes to the QDX. It's just such a cool little Talk unit. Talk really quiet. Like uh, there's a comment. Go ahead, comment. Can you, or, it's more of a question, but do, I have a QDX. Do you feel that the QDX gets out better than your normal everyday SSB stuff? I I have that opinion. Uh, not necessarily. And I think it hears better too. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think so necessarily. I, I I don't know that that's not true or is true, but um, it it I, does really well. I feel that it does better than my uh, IC seventy six hundred. 
I, I'm having a really hard time copying you. Like right now, your audio is like really like you have a you have the highest DSP audio that you could have. Could you switch to something else? Well, I'm sure. Are you there? Sure thing. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. No, it's there's. Oh, see, I'm having all. Ah, how do you? Okay. I was just making a joke about whisper, just talking really quietly. Yeah, it was it was really quiet talking, but it also sounded like a ton of DSP that was added to the uh, to the audio. Yeah, that channel. was someone else different. No, I know, but I'm saying like uh, it was it was hard. It was a hard copy to me uh, to be in my ear holes. All right, so I. I wish. Why can't you just export this to PDF or or uh, CSV? Oh my God, I'm getting pissed off. Um, because it's not comma separated, is it? No, it's not. It's like space separated. Hey, don't you have to import it in something like Excel first? Yeah, but you gotta get it out of it. Well, then Excel can export to CSV. No, I know, but like, so when when you when you paste this in, it it's not acknowledging carriage return or line feed. It's just it's just dropping it as one unbroken text. Uh, in 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 Excel, it is. Yeah, well, in Google Docs. Oh, oh well, yeah, Google Docs. It Excel, used to work. I don't usually, I usually don't have problems with Excel, but yeah. This all used to work. Okay, just Josh, fine. can you hear me now? Oh my gosh, so it's so much better. Did you change mics? I went to uh, uh, Apple headphones that plug into the bottom of my phone. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, that that is way better. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I was I was using AirPods, and I, I think they're about done. There we go. Okay, now I got it. Okay, so I f have a feeling on 5 watts uh, that my QDX does a better job of output and input than my 7600. On five watts. Seventy six hundred. Oh, I mean, at seven uh, seventy six hundred. Yeah, I mean, maybe because I mean the the QDX is largely SDR, isn't it? I uh, yeah, I think it's all internal SDR. It doesn't even make noise. Uh, I all I know is that it's so dang simple for me to just set that thing up and and go to work, uh, doing whisper or whatever, and that's generally what I do. I I use that for whisper testing, and just like off grid. Uh, FT8 or JSA call. JSA call is great on that. So let's. What's the furthest that I got out uh, today? I got eight thousand one hundred and sixty-two miles from uh, from my location on Whisper. So it wasn't a two-way contact, but they heard me. That's really good. That's really really good. And that was directional antenna. No, or just uh, dipole and vertical, right? dipole and vertical, and and uh, we can use the timestamps. I'm I'm gonna break things up with the timestamps. Uh, so the later timestamps are gonna be the vertical. So yeah, the longest one came in on. Actually, it didn't matter whether it was on the vertical or the dipole because at 2044 and 2050, uh, both of them, both of them heard me. So this is uh, hex tena. Whisper testing. Whoop. Oh, wow, I did a great job. JSA call question. Yeah, go ahead, man. I don't want to derail you too bad, but how do you, do you have, to, when you log contacts, you have to tell it to log, is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. Because and how does it know? Because it's, it's, all, it's all human, it's all text, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. And then you take that log, just like FT8 logs from WSJTX, and then you export those to QRZ or Logbook of the World or whoever you log with. Yeah, yeah. So um, when you hit the log button, you can make your logger actually pull that information out because at that point, those text fields are going to be known to it. It may auto ingest it. So if you are using something like Ham Radio Deluxe, N3FJP, and um, N1MM, you could auto log that to that log. You can set that up. 
And then once you do that, it just gets auto pushed to QRZ or likely a manual push to uh, Logbook of the World. So what's bringing this up is I'm supposed to work next weekend, the Oklahoma QSO party, and I will be the first person to have run JS8 call. I have no clue what I'm doing other than the fact that I have set everything up and I, I do know how to run the JS8 call thanks to your video. Okay. Um, but the logging thing had to be kind of stymied because it's like, because FT8, it just logs it for you. You hit yes and keep moving. Um, mm -hmm. And then you go back into the logs and shove it over into, but I'm not, uh, I'm going to have to shove it into something like you said to do the Cabrillo log for the Oklahoma QSO party. Um, so N3 FJP might be my friend. Yes, likely. I, I'm thinking so. Or, I mean, a, a, try yeah. N1MM. Try that, because it's free. Okay. Uh, I will do it. There you go. Right. Un unless you've already paid for N3 FJP. Yeah, if you've already paid for it, then use that. Well, I've used N3 FJP on winter field day, so I kind of have a way of... I, I know my way around it already, but I have not purchased it. So I, I am definitely not... Uh, not opposed to free. It was a club thing to uh, to the N3 FJP. Yeah. I actually bought it. I, I think it's a bargain, honestly. But mm -hmm. I'm not a I'm not a Windows guy. I'm I'm a I'm a Mac guy, and it's kind of hard to find stuff that'll work. But the Jankopotamus. It's a Windows computer. Uh, I I saw I saw Frank's video on the Jankopotamus, and I have heard Mike's thoughts on it, and I have to say I I I just disagree with them. I get it. Uh, your the drivers suck, and there's no recovery partition. You, you if you have the capability to to pull a, a recovery off of it, you should do that for that computer. You really should, um, but man, I'm telling you, I I love them for the price. <laughs> They're disposable to me. They're like the Baofengs of laptops. Yeah, if you saw his video, Frank's video, you you would have seen that I also lost my drivers. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I saw that. Funny. But but what's crazy about that is I have had that situation where the the Wi-Fi doesn't work, and then all I do is restart it, and then they just they come back. Yeah, I restarted mine several times. I, I totally photo. believe you. I totally believe you. Dan. And I know you. And the thing, the thing is, though, like two days later, it was back working again. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Is it's, I don't know. I, I, I guess I haven't had as many issues like... as you guys have had. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'm lucky in some ways when it comes to technology. So, are you telling me to turn the updates off? No, uh, no, no, because I update it all the time and I've not had a problem. So I, I don't think that I would say that. But Don I might. wouldn't. Well, yeah, I, I, no, I, the, the Windows 10 updates I probably would go ahead and do, but do not let it go to Windows 11. Oh, no, I, I, I have not done that. Yeah, one of mine actually updated to Windows 11 from 10, and I, I'm still pissed. Why Windows uh, 11 is good? Not not my not my Jankopotamus. Well, fortunately, it, the the Jankopotamus is not compatible. No, it's 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 not, and nor would I want to run that. Um, I I don't know. I I guess I'm. So I I always argue that like technology and me, it's kind of like when you take your car to a uh, to the garage or a mechanic and you're like, well, it's making this noise, but it's not making it now. Like everybody I know that I go like work on their stuff. They're like, Oh, it's not doing the thing that it did before. It's like, so, okay. Cause when I'm there, I think technology knows that I'll, I'll just destroy it. If it, if it misbehaves, you piss me <laughs> off long enough and I'll, I'll put a bullet through you. But I, I, well, I don't know. It's, it's it's Windows. Anytime you try to show somebody who knows what they're doing, it all the the error message always goes away on Windows. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I, I'm all not right. going to pretend like I know what I'm doing as I as I used to when I was actively doing IT. That's been decades now. But at a time, that's what I did as a profession. And I I I don't know. I 
I gotta say, if you did the if you did your homework, if you did the time, do your backups back in the day. It was it was Ghost Norton Ghost. If you did your ghosts and you had your images, I rarely ran into problems. I I did the work ahead of time and I could just bring systems back online. I had very little problem. But I don't know people mm. people in technology, man. Weird failures happen, and we know that. Did you ever use uh, Active Directory? No, I did. Uh, no, oh, God, no, 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 no. I didn't do that. But, Never. But I, I, I don't horrible. know what you guys are having problems with. It's, it it all works fine. It, I I yeah. gotta say, I I I cannot tell you a better place to put now seventy five dollars for for a Jankopotamus. I like. Mm. Don't bring your expensive laptops well, into the field. Bring your bring your crap top. That's what I just, gotta say. Make sure you debloat it first. Please uh, debloat it. Please debloat it. It is so much I, better. So much I, better. I haven't debloated mine because I don't know how to do it, and there isn't a good enough explanation for me to go and, and kill it like that. I did it online, didn't I? Didn't I show it online? Yeah, show? yeah. You got two, a couple of videos on it, right? Yeah, and I got one too. There, it, it's not hard. There's a, a, a just an extra. A gray man, uh, right? Script. Yeah, it's Gray Man. Uh, yeah, no, okay. I, I I did it on a live stream, but go watch Gray Man's video because it might be shorter than mine. And that's probably faster okay. to get going. Yeah, there's, but, there's some utilities that you can you can download, and they're they, they're just scripts that run in the background and but take care the, of all that stuff uh, for you. What's the what's the console that you have to bring up when you do it? it it's not the standard terminal window. You've got to use hmm? PowerShell. 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 Yeah, yeah, so it's Windows PowerShell. So PowerShell is like. Pow okay, so I'll put this into context. If you're mucking around in PowerShell and you don't know what you're doing, please be careful because PowerShell can like brick your box if you, if you screw that up. So, mesh go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, Mesh Tastic works so great from PowerShell. Yo, I mean, it works fine. I've got no problem with that either. Uh, PowerShell will 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 rock your world if you <laughs> if you do something wrong in it. So follow the directions to the letter. That was my comment, I believe, on well, the deep loading. I, I think if you stay out of administrator mode in PowerShell, then you're not going to get oh, yourself in trouble. Who does that though? That's that's where the fun is. Uh, where you go, you go full. At uh, I don't really need it when I'm running Mesh Tastic, but yeah. Oh, that's true. You don't need that for Mesh Tastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right on. All right. Let's Thank go back. You guys. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to open questions from anybody that's watching. Now, this is, uh, I'm, I'm watching the YouTube chat. I'm watching the Discord. Anybody, anywhere would like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Question. Hi. Question. Uh, so let's go with David. I think I saw David. That was the first, that was the only name I, I could capture. So go ahead, David. You're first. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Hey, a couple things. First off, you were talking about hammers earlier. Uh, hammers, if it's Windows it's or iOS, it's free. If you use, uh, if you use it on your cell phone, it's five ninety nine. dollars I had to do double check that, but that's, that's what I was talking about there. Uh, and you were talking about the Jacob Ponis. I had one die on me. <laughs> Turned out, the, for some reason, the connector was going bad. The power connector went bad and it died out on me, and I couldn't get it to charge back up. Okay. Uh, dang. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What to, I don't know what to say because it's like it's so cheap. Like, take it back, return it. If you bought it, if you bought it at uh at Micro Center, that's the way to do it. Or as Lay calls it, Michael Center. Uh, that's that's the way to do it. Just return that thing. Actually, I got an Amazon special, so. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. So only thing I don't only thing I don't like about it is got an integrated hard drive on it, so you they can't pull you can't pull it out to uh, swap yeah. it over to something else. But they do. Uh, some of them have the slot for uh, uh, an S uh, not an SD card, a cell phone chip, and that you can swap that out and put an actual SD in that slot, and then you could put the recovery drive on that SD slot. Which is pretty nice. Yeah, that's what I did with the new one. Yeah, well, SIM card. New, thank you, thank you. New SIM card. Yeah, all sorts of fun. Oh, got a new project going on to now. Working on a uh, fifteen meter uh, moxin for field day. Mmm, that's nice. I love a moxin. I love a good moxin. Right on, man. 
Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, okay, so Apex Theory question, what campsites are reserved for the camp out at Silverwood? Uh, why are you asking that question? Instead of like trying to do this whole thing, like you're going to get the adjacent campsite, please RSVP via the form. If we need to add campsites, we will. Just RSVP because otherwise we get into this weird world of, well, this ham's over at this campsite. It, it Just RSVP. We try and manage the whole thing to make it easy. Because, okay, here's, here's what you get if you RSVP. There is a cost, but the cost includes multiple dinners, multiple meals, and a t-shirt, a custom t-shirt. And if you're like the random ham that just got the campsite next to us, we're all eaten and we're not going to give you food. And then you're like, oh, wh why don't I get a shirt? It's like, it just, I would prefer it if you just did the thing. And by the way, we're not making any money on this. It's just, it's, that's the way we do it. If, if you could, if, if that's okay with you, check it out and think about it. All right. Who's next? Uh, we got a number of people. So go ahead. I'm paying attention now. Hello. Question. Uh, Shadow Warrior. Are you go ahead, and then there's another. We'll go next to the other person. Yeah, I, uh, I decided to take a leap into uh, trying to purchase and uh, set up my own DMR radio, and I think I stepped in it. <laughs> okay, okay. What, what's going on? Uh, I watched a couple of Bridgecom's videos on setting it up. And wait, did you uh, buy the bridge? Of... Is it a Bridgecom radio? No, I bought the uh, MDUV 390. Okay. And I watched their how they set it up on on the CPS software, which I found out the first day and a half that the factory the stock CPS sof software is garbage. So I got a, 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 a an after uh, open source one. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to set it up, but watching Ham Radio 2.0's videos and watching Bridgecom videos. They all their repeaters that they use in their areas are all laid out like perfect, but in my area, there's a lot of missing fields and stuff in the repeater book that on how to on inputting the correct talk group and uh the, like the color code and the uh, uh time slaughter there, but there's no like disconnect talk group. There's no breakdown of of the the add-ons to the various talk groups okay have you have you just have you just tried to program it and see if it works well that's what i was looking for there, like nobody breaks down what each section of the cps software what each section actually does so i don't know how to just throw something at it to get it to work so if if jason for instance is not mentioning those fields then don't worry about them Comment. Uh, well, before we go to the comment, does that make sense? It, so you're you're looking you're looking at a wealth of data in the CPS software. It has a ton of e extraneous stuff that you don't need to worry yourself with. If they're not talking about it, then you don't need to worry about it. it does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, but that's that that's that. It's it's not showing what they're talking about. Like the they say that in if you have a talk group and you want to exit the talk group, you have to have a disconnect. Yeah. And my in repeater book in my area, the repeaters don't show a disconnect talk group and they don't show a parrot talk group. So I'm kind of like, I just don't use it then, or I just yeah, switch don't zone and just forget about don't it. use it. Yep, don't use it. But so you know, here's the thing. If you haven't tried it and report back with what you've experienced, then it's really hard for us to speculate what the repeaters may have or may not have set up, right? So what you got to do is go do the best you can, program it in the best way you know how, and then report back with what you've what you've done. It it sounds like to me you're on the precipice of like major discovery, major experimentation in the scientific fashion. You're going to apply what you know with the information you have and do an experiment of how effective it is. And you may come back and go like, oh my God, my repeater just wouldn't get out of this talk group and I couldn't do anything. It's like, okay, well now we gotta figure that out. But we need more information. Like we 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 need you to go 
try it. Go hands on. Program that thing. Try to get on a couple of talk groups and see what happens, and then come back. That makes sense. Oh man. Yeah my my biggest thing though is like the DMR the DMR repeaters that are close to me. I am like I live just outside their range, and I, it'd be I'd have to try to do a hot spot. How do you know you're that, outside yeah. their range if you haven't tried? Because on repeater book, it tells you the estimated range based off people that have used it. Try it. That's not accurate. Try it. Again, yeah, try- you're, you're, you're too stuck in the, in the books. Get out of the books. Try it. Use it. Tr- give it a shot. Program it yourself. It, That's what's going to show was- you. It will scare you the range of a DMR repeater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you you you're probably going to get way further than you can think on any repeater. So, uh, was it? We had we had two comments. It was Mike. Was Mike the first one? Mm-hmm. I, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Go ahead with your comment, and then we'll go to the next comment. The um, GD seventy seven is easier to program than than the standard CPS, and also TO is doing a, a series on that radio doing it. There so you I'll go. Have a look at have a look at Tio's. Uh, I, I'm sure it is that radio. The, the, I think I think Don gave it to him. So um, it's got a different name. It's got a retifist name, but it's the same. Oh, name. it's the R R90. Yeah, but I mean, Kawana's saying it. Just try it. This is amateur radio, not professional radio. John says I agree with Josh. I've hit repeaters in Melbourne way further than repeater book says yeah dude just try like seriously you're at the point let's let's put the put the programming on the radio and give it a go and see what happens all that other stuff you can figure out after the fact and if anything goes wonky on you turn the radio off just turn it off it's fine no big deal yeah you can't you can't break those things yeah you're good just like if you think you're in a situation where the radio like oh i won't stop transmitting i can't i'm tired of hearing this talk group turn it off just turn it off you're good and then just, and and, just and dropped, and us. Yeah. And I just dropped uh, T.O.'s link to YouTube if yeah. they want to check out uh, his series. Shout out. Shout out to Temporarily Offline. Great guy. Check out his stuff. All right. I appreciate it. Right on. But, but ser- I mean, if you go, if you go experiment with it and come back, um, we can work with you further. But you, you, at this point, you got to give it a, you got to give it a go. We, we got to see what happens when you try it. All right, who's next with a comment or question? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm talking about the DMR. Uh, There's a Rocky Mountain prep. Go ahead. Yeah, to the guy with the comment on the th- on the 390, um, I got a 380. They're essentially the same radio, except for the 390 has an IP67 rating on it. Um, so I have a bunch of repeaters that are the same as yours. They don't have a quote-unquote disconnect. So the way that my that mine are set up is like after 10 minutes or so it'll mark that uh talk group inactive if you don't key up on it no one key other else keys up on it on a different repeater and uh also if you just want to uh change the uh talk group and and it doesn't have like designated talk groups to the repeater you can just change it key up and it'll auto change from my from the experience oh i like that just you can switch from one talk group to another talk group and it just changes over i like that that's a good idea yeah. yeah, and and uh, if you have any problems programming, uh, Josh, I don't know. Does this count as a self? Uh, uh, am I am I allowed to drop in the live stream yeah, the video? Good, I good. It, I didn't know if that counted as like a self sponsoring. No, or anything. well, if it's completely apropos of nothing and you're just dropping links, yeah, that's not okay. But like we are actively having a conversation. If you have a good answer for this, absolutely, man, drop it. Great, great. Yeah, go nuts. Okay, yeah, I'm dropping it right now, and then I He's... also had a question. Can we go straight into that, or do you want to open with, it up? With with you something? providing that much service to the community, yes, we can go to your question next, man. <laughs> okay, um, so with all that info that I had being said, uh, my mom, after the whole AT and T thing, is deciding to get into ham radio. Wonderful. Yeah, it's it's wonderful and it's horrible because yep. she <laughs> and uh, wait wait because she's what because she's what first responder and the radios oh. with the first responder world are already pre-set up for her, so trying to teach her this stuff is uh kind of like trying to find a needle in a haystack yeah um and i was looking for a mobile radio for her um i mean the Linko and all those are great but mm-hmm. uh 
my buddy, I'm buddies with the county programmer, and he has given me authorization to program uh, my radio and whoever else's radios in my family with the channels because we're all first responders. Um, and I was trying to find a radio for my mom that would work both ham and the public safety bands. I found the TYT TH7800. Yeah. Um, the only reason I kind of did like it is because it has zones on it, and uh, we operate in a lot of zone type stuff up here. Uh, I was wondering if anyone else had any other recommendations for a uh, ham radio and kind of business radio, if you will. So, Gosh, can I take this one? Yeah, you can, but I, I have a clarifying question. Are, are the, the public service frequencies that you're using, are they analog or are they digital? Surprisingly enough, these are still analog. These are like our pager and backup channels. What um, frequency ranges? Uh, they're 151 to about 170 is the uh, lowest to highest range area. So you could almost Mars mod most mobiles and get access to that stuff, it sounds like? Yeah, I thought so, but my my other biggest deal was the whole zone thing, and not too many radios that I've seen have zones except for like the TYT and the Handy Tone was the only reason I was looking at these. Okay, yeah, go ahead, take it, Frank. Okay, okay, this will make it easier on you. It isn't the uh, easiest price range wise, but if you're willing to drop two, three, four hundred dollars, get a Motorola radio or a Kenwood commercial radio in, you know, it sounds like VHF band for both uh, public service and ham in this case, get a VHF radio from Motorola or Kenwood commercial. And that's something she's probably familiar with. And you can program it exactly how you need it to with the frequencies. You know, channel zone one, channel one can be 652 simplex. Zone one, channel two can be your local repeater. And then zone one, channel three can be, you know, the pager frequency. You know and what? That way, she doesn't have to try and remember. Yeah. She doesn't have to try and remember channel name. You know, even the, even in TYT radios, she doesn't have to try and remember, oh, this is here and this is there. It's exactly like the work radio, but it has the ham aspect to it. Yeah, I, I agree with that, actually. I uh, Since. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I, I think that's right, because she's used to she's used to the radios where it's all channelized anyway. And so that seems to me that makes sense in my mind yeah i already thought of that except for um we have both vhf and uhf stuff here and uh there's only been one radio that i can find that does both of those and is already public safety and it's like two or three grand was my hang up well okay yes you, yeah. you have that issue the apex 7000 is one of them there is a harris radio uh, the XG X-ray golf series, the uh, uh, the 100Ms, uh, the mobile version. Yeah, that's a good one for it. Uh, and those are considerably somewhat cheaper than some of the used Motorola's on the market for dual band stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have the 100M in my truck and I like it. I just didn't want to spend that much was the reason I was looking at the TYTs, but yeah, thanks guys. Um, I'm trying to think. I think Come on, are, are you saying you don't want to spend that much money on your mom? Oh, wow. Wow. Guilty. Tim oh. went there. Man, no, I mean, this, this, this is the woman that raised you and, and fed you and took care of you. And, no, but oh, come on, man. Almost, like, when I was telling her about this, her strict rule was do not spend as much money as you did. And I spent $800 on my mobile Harris. So that's, yeah. Uh, okay, so you, you, you may not be able to go cheaper than that. That's the thing, is at some point, like, you're not going to be able to get the functionality functionality out of it with the capabilities you're looking for, right? That's that's kind of the reality. They, they may not exist. It may not exist unless she wants to screw around with uh, a bunch of channels and all kinds of other stuff that she has to dial through. Then, no. I will say this, if your county or whatever is not planning on going digital for a long time, I'm talking like years down the road past where she would care much about it, 
uh, Motorola XTL, X-Ray Tango Lima, XTL series radios. You know, you could get those. They're the mobile versions. You could get those for two, three hundred a piece. You could get one in VHF, one in UHF, and you're set. I mean, it's technically single band radios, but you have both bands at that point. Yeah, I thought about that too. Uh, crap. I, now I feel stupid. I should have clarified this. Um, our pager channels and wildland channels are VHF, but our day to day. And those pager channels ha are a backup for the county in case the state system goes down and the state system is 800 digital. So I guess the VHF stuff is just kind of a backup is the whole reason I kind of wanted to get her one that could transmit on those as a backup was my deal. Sorry, guys, I should have let off with that. I feel dumb now. Oh, no, that, that that's okay. Uh, so basically, uh, VHF is just a backup and you want something that will cover VHF and UHF then. Yeah. I would go, I, I would, you know, despite what she says, uh, Tim has a point, I would drop the money and get her probably the Harris uh, 100M for uh, dual band purposes. All Is right. it B25 or DMR or what? Um, so the VHF channels, they're all analog, but then the... Uh, the digital ones are P25 on the 800, and I am not allowed to program those. I was given strict rules allowed to because it has a security key, which I don't know. Does anyone, if anyone here has messed with those, they know what I mean that I'm not allowed to touch that. And uh, but you could, right? But you could. If, you, you, I, yeah, you could. <laughs> if I got caught in the state of Colorado, they consider that computer hacking. So, computer yeah. you, they give you the kevin mitnick is what you're saying oh my goodness yeah, oh my goodness okay yeah that i got it i got colorado, it colorado is weird like that with their 800 stuff Rocky uh, Mountain yeah High. for for, oh, for that God. i would definitely get uh you know if you have to listen to the 800 stuff i would get a unication g5 pager and i'm sure josh would back that one up uh to a point i i do like it i do like it a lot but uh you have to be so okay so straight up because of what he's told me that he's analog mostly i don't think the unication is the way to go i think a handheld scanner is probably the way to go but she needs to transmit right or is she just l receiving um so the the whole reason i even wanted to get her one that could transmit on those is because we're volunteer so Okay, is there like is there somebody you can ask? Hey, we're volunteering with your organization. Can you help us out with the dang radio? Can you just yeah. ask for city funds to pay for a volunteer's radio? Uh, I don't know because the VHF stuff is kind of forgotten about, and I have been put in charge of the radio stuff at the fire department that she's on. So Okay, okay, I'm... hear me out. Hear me out. This might not be something you're comfortable with doing. I appreciate it. A lot of ham guys are just going to be like, I'll figure out how to do this on my own. I appreciate that. I'm about that. But this is a situation where if you're a volunteer, why are you paying out of pocket hundreds of dollars for this kind of stuff if you can't get the city, county, or state to help offset that? It's not to say that you don't have to do that occasionally. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in this case, given the specifics of those band differences, you might want to reach out and be like, hey, you guys got to help us out on this one. You can't expect us to pay $500, $600, $800 dollars to figure out how to do this, right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. And the only reason I didn't do that is because this is kind of a her and I project and no one else really knows. Oh, so like, you well, you're going I, I, above I, and beyond. You're you're going way above and beyond on this, right? I'm I'm trying to make her really happy with me before I leave her for college. Is kind of what I'm trying to do. Mm. Go 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 to full bandwidth. Get the Harris radio. Install it for her. Yeah, and be done with if it. you already that, have a that's, solution, that's just future. just figure out how to make that work, and then just do that because the ham solution is not going to be the way. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it's just I don't know. I I don't know that there's a ham. I mean, yes, you could do this with ham radio, but you're likely going to leave her with too many menu options and a whole 
gobbledygook of other stuff that she's just not going to, she just doesn't want to play around with. She doesn't want to deal with it. Right. So she's not yeah. going to, she's not going to use it. She's not going to use it in that case. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. And I, I was just trying to think a little bit cause I know, cause I kind of do like the TYTs to an extent. And so that's why I went that route. And I'm just kind of still playing with it because she said she was going to get it. I gifted her one of my spare radio, my spare handhelds, and we're just going to see what happens now. <laughs> but yeah, thanks, guys. Um, okay, I'll look into it a little bit more. I you know what? Actually, uh, that's a that's a really positive way of going. Is let's start her out with a handheld, get her keyed up on it, like a get a Baofeng that's just way too broad and wide, get her an upgraded antenna. Program that up and see what you can do with that. Because I we didn't even ask about ranges or anything like that. The bow fan could be fine. Um, get it all programmed, channelized, and then it, if she's able to work it, then okay, maybe some ham options on the mobile side, 50 watts or whatever, will work. Uh, but you can build up to it at that point because she's got some experience now, right? So that that might be the way to go. I gifted her my Alenko that she could take with her and play with it. Um, I, I asked her since she's not licensed yet, not to key up on it. And I threw in like two meter call, 70 centimeter call, three local repeaters and just, just some basic necessity stuff for my area so she could listen to. And I was just looking into the future for a mobile was kind of where I was at. Cause I'm a over preparer if we're being honest. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. I hear you right on. So thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, everybody in the chat, the pine sill, which is a really nice USB-C soldering iron, is on sale right now, unaffiliated with me or anything like that. I just dropped the link in chat. Twenty-five ninety-nine, normally thirty-five ninety-nine, so you get ten bucks off, and it's actually pretty legit. Uh, I I have soldered a, a a coax connector with it, so the heat is good enough to be workable in that sense. It's not. The hottest iron, no question, but uh, it'll totally work. In I'd, I'd rather have that than a butane soldering iron, if you know what I'm talking about. It's it's a much better iron than that. Yeah. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy in chat, Pig Pig 105, that's been trying to speak. I think he's new. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is this a good uh, time for me to speak? Yeah. Go for it, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm Thomas, and my call sign's KE2BUD. And I'm relatively new to um, ham radio. Just just got licensed about six months ago, and I'm now a general. But um, I have a question regarding the QDX digital transceiver. I Great. got it. I got it built, and it's quite cool. And at first, I wasn't able to get it running, and spent weeks struggling but you know it was just my battery was was old so put in a new battery and sure enough it came up in device manager and i'm running it on what's that one program called ws jtx i think yeah 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 um so i was running it on that software and i don't actually hear anything so when you when you talk on digital mode is it like kind of texting over ham radio or do you hear people yeah. or no so yeah exactly your 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 computer's audio is being sent into that device via USB and obviously that little box no speaker in that thing so there's nothing to hear right so yeah no it's totally speakerless no audio straight to digital and on the air so it's it's all over digital to your radio slash to computer. If you read the uh, if you read the not the installation manual but the instructions on actually how to use it, uh, that's what I was kind of asking Josh a little while ago. Does it does it have an advantage because it isn't actually making noise to the computer and from the computer? It's actually doing it on the board in the in the QDX or something like that, some variation making SSB that way. I might be wrong. Well, there's no SSB. It's a trick thing. Yeah, hold on. So just uh, let's go back. It was Thomas, right? Yep. So does that make sense, what I just said? 
yeah so it's kind of like but uh is it just like saying your call sign and like cool i made a contact or can you actually have a conversation with them with, no you know you, text you, you cannot so if you want to have a conversation uh it will just be keyboard to keyboard like text messaging then you have to use an app called js8 call JS8 call will work with the that. QDX. That's the only way that you'll have the keyboard to keyboard type contact with that do, radio. Do most, do most people do that? Or when people are doing like POTA and stuff, or are they just trying to make as many contacts as they can? So if they're doing parks on the air, they're trying to make as many contacts as they can. Now, if you, so I want to make sure, because it sounds like you're kind of new. This radio, the radio that you have, the QDX, that is a digital mode operation radio only. It doesn't do voice. If you wanted to do voice transmission to be able to have a voice contact, you need a different radio to be able to accomplish that. There are a ton of people that do parks on the air where they do voice contacts. And yeah, some of them are trying to roll through them quickly. A lot of times when I do parks on the air, I, I jabber with people and go back and forth a little bit. But um it, it depends, Comment. right? Hold on. Let's just let him re respond to that. So go ahead. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So I guess I was – I really didn't understand it. Someone uh, actually gave it to me, and, you know, it was, it was my first soldering kit. So nice. it was kind of cool, but I don't have an antenna set up quite yet. I just okay. have a cable that I ran up a tree, and I'm, like, up in a treehouse or something with uh, my laptop. But – uh. <laughs> So we'll see if I could make some uh, contacts, but someone else told me, he said, be careful, make sure to measure your SWR because you'll, you'll blow those, yes. you know those black things with y the three legs. Yeah, I'm so glad they told you that. Okay, so the, the QDX is, it is not a happy camper if you give it a, an antenna that's not a, a cut for resonance on the frequency that you're trying to operate on. So this is a situation where, yeah, you, you do have to be very careful about that. It, it will not, it, it will blow up. You, you can kill the finals on it. So you do need to give it an, a proper antenna and know just a wire that you throw out the window of the treehouse is probably not going to be acceptable in this case. I highly encourage you look up a dipole antenna and you build yourself a dipole antenna first this is the only okay. radio you have this is the only one Nah, i also have a uh an icom id 880h for vhf and uhf and i just got that a week ago okay okay so that uh, I, I have that hooked up to uh some ground planes in the attic which is good that's good good job but uh no other hf radios that have like a no, signal I've strength never meter, made a SWR meter. On okay. HF before. The fact that you got a QDX. So, by the way, congratulations on uh, doing a soldering job on a QDX. That's like an intermediate radio for a lot of folks to be able to get that up and running. So good for you. There's a lot of winding of toroids on that thing. Um, I would be really careful about the antenna you connect to it, and if it's an antenna you've built that you haven't verified it's good with a radio that is a little bit more tolerant of swr imbalances it could be a problem i see so so i just have to you know constantly monitor it with my uh no you I don't want to you don't want it you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to transmit into an antenna oh wait did you say a nano vna wait did you say the, the yeah oh okay all right we're back in there all right, I was really worried there for a second. Okay, so build yourself a resonant antenna using the Nano VNA, and then, and only then, connect it to that QDX for that band of operation, and then you'll be good to go. I see, so I, I can only transmit, like, on right where the money's at, right? Yes, right where the money's at. So you want to literally tune that uh dipole to be like let's say 20 meters so you want it to be like 14.078 like you want that sweet spot to be right there and then that qdx will sing it will be perfect all right cool thanks for the comment yeah so okay we'll go to shadow and then we'll go to the next one go ahead go ahead man 
if you want to do voice over a di digital radio, I'm pretty sure free DV or D uh, VD or no, it's DV will work over. It'll do digital over. It'll do uh, voice over digital. And uh, M17 also has an external board that will do voice to digital, and you can send that over a digital radio. That's not what we're talking about. Completely different radios in this case. But yes, you're right. But uh, keep in mind that everything you just mentioned leverages the internet to do what he's he's doing right now, and that's that's not what he's looking for. I think. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. Free, free DV is a pro is a program. Yeah, free DV is over the internet. Mm, no, it's HF. But, oh, oh, but well, the, okay. No, no, you're right. Free DV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Sorry, but you can't but do I, it with the QDX. That's not going right. to work. It's yeah. the wrong kind of. Uh, Whatever, because yeah. it's uh, the QDX. I think is FSK only. Yes, okay, it does it's, one tone. It's right. an FSK transmitter. It's not upper sideband. There's no sidebands. It's FSK. Um, can I offer some things after owning mine for almost two years? Yeah, go ahead, man. Um, the speaker wire antenna sounds like a novel thing on 20 meters, especially out of a, a treehouse kind of situation. Sounds kind of cool. Especially if you have the ability to tune it like you do with the Nano VNA, if you have a way of hooking that all together. Uh, but a BNC bayonet, I don't know, Josh has got them in videos, so does TO, uh, temporarily offline. And they show you, Josh shows you how to make a speaker wire antenna, I believe, in a video. I did that with uh, Jerry. Jerry. With Jerry, yeah, that's uh, he came to my house and we drank really strong beers and made a speaker wire at Detta. Yeah, that that'd be my suggestion to start with because it's going to be fun uh, to make yeah. that and tune it exactly to twenty. Because uh, I don't know if you've got a high band or a low band, but twenty will work on either uh, on the QDX. And I think I have the high band. Yeah. We see so you have the eighty eighty through Yeah, yeah. Twenty? Okay. And that's what I have. Did you say you were a technician or you have your general? Well I what I just got my general. Oh, okay, yeah, then you're good. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're good good to go. And then I have had to replace those three legged things that you were referring to earlier. Uh those uh FET whatever you want to call them, transmitter, uh sorry. The finals. Um, yes. I transmitted on 30 meters instead of 20 by stupid and smoked them. So, uh, so it, Jeff, it is a thing. I, I don't know that I haven't fully smoked mine yet. Uh, I might have done it today, but I was uh, doing the test, the whisper test on the hex tenna. And the hex tenna goes from like, uh, you can go dipole to a vertical, but you have to add the radial. And I'm like monkeying around, moving the, the dipoles to a vertical, but I had the radial wire connected. And I, I moved one of the dipole legs off and put it center and then took the other dipole off and, and, and you know, moved it away and then started tuning it. And I didn't realize I was just blasting a uh, whisper five watts into my hands while I was doing that. I was like, oh, buddy, I'm, I'm doing a whole thing right there. I, I figured it out quickly and stopped it, but I, I, I don't know that I didn't damage that radio. So we'll we'll find out. No, because uh, I think I made FT8 after warning. it. Yeah, I think I made FT8 after that. Go ahead. The, the only other warning I've got is to go to the internet somewhere and buy aluminum heating fins. If you don't have some already, heat sink fins are basically a requirement in Oklahoma during the summer with that radio. You've just got to put them on it because it gets really hot and it will burn it up. And isn't it nice they put it in a black case? Isn't oh, it exactly? nice? Isn't that, that nice? Sun? That's it's so great. nice. It's so convenient. It is aluminum, so it does dissipate yeah. the heat if you've got a fairly good size heat sink on it. And yeah. that's, uh, that is a recommendation that I would say they don't. It doesn't cost three or four bucks for a few inches of heat sink, and that's all you really need. Yeah, I, I like it. Good, good idea. Should I put thermal paste underneath my washer? Yeah. Uh, underneath yes. the wa so the washer, as I remember correctly, the washer is merely holding down those MOSFETs, and the MOSFETs are rounded domes. I'd put the thermal paste on the bottom. I think that's where they're probably generating the most put, amount of heat. Put it, put it wherever you think you might need it, because it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it's probably not going to hurt. That's funny though, because. <laughs>
Could you imagine you open up somebody's QDX like, oh, I noticed you did the thermal paste job. I did the Linus Tech Tips thermal paste job. I have uh, 12 ounces of thermal paste shoved into this bad boy. Well, that'd be bad. Uh, um, all right. Well, there you go. I just liquid metal. Yeah, li- I just liquid questions. metal my, uh, my boss fats on my QDX. <laughs> all right. Uh, Pig Pig, you had a comment. Go ahead. You still there, man? I, I did. I was just saying... Um, you said comment earlier. I, I did. Did you get it? Did you get it out? Oh yeah, that's what I was talking okay. about before. I, you good. know. All right, I'm good. Yeah. So we got a question on the YouTube side from Redreamer. If I only memorize answers to the exam questions, will I learn the rest later? Well, it really depends on you, but most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, you figure all that stuff out as you go. All Nothing right. Beat. Um experience right yeah and, and experience getting out and doing it yeah so here's what i want to do uh I, we're, we're, I i kept people waiting we haven't got to the 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 topic that i want to hit and adam's still here so i got to make sure we get the story from him so i want to hear about your hardest poda or soda activation and the focus should be on like what gear or special tactics you deployed and it could be just I had clo- I had the appropriate outer garments on to help me get through it. That's what I want to hear because I know that there's actually people that go sit in the snow and all that other stuff to get radioactive, which is awesome. So I'm going to I'm going to go to Adam first if he if he if he's available uh, to be able to relay his story to us, and that's that's where I'd like to go. Adam, are you there? Oh no. Oh, he's I there. I'm sorry. Had to, had, had to get to the button. <laughs> so, so I can think of, uh, I can think of a few. Um, so number one, uh, there's a peak in Anza Borrego desert state park called rabbit peak and rabbit peak is a bit beyond villager peak, uh, up the ridge line. You start, Oh, I think, uh, below a thousand feet elevation, the summit of Rabbit Peak, I think, is around 6,000 feet elevation. And there's some ups and downs along the way to get there. So all said and done, it's about, I think, 20 or 21 miles round trip with a, over 8,000 feet of gain and loss. And That's a big trip. That, <laughs> yeah. Big so trip. I did that in a day. And, and that was back when I was carrying the FT-817. <laughs> so it wasn't particularly oh light. Oh, um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, for, for that, uh, key, key preparation elements, obviously, uh, being in good shape and, and having a, a high level of fitness. Cause there's, there's, uh, there's no water out there. It's very rugged and steep, uh, and difficult terrain. So you gotta be physically prepared. And then I also started that hike with about, uh, I think a gallon and a half of water and I ran out of water about a mile from the car on the way back. Oh so, my goodness. Um, <laughs> that's a decent so that amount of water. Yeah, it. that's a lot of water. Yeah. Anza Borrego is a desert, by the way, everybody. That's that's a desert. What what that month just were you like doing? Good timing. What what month were you there? Yeah, it, it, oh, I want to it was like spring or fall, probably like November, February, March, something like that. And okay. you know, it's pretty nice up, up at the higher elevation, but you get back down to that desert in the evening and and it's you know it still can get up to eighty five or ninety in the desert in the winter. Everything's um, still on the warmer days. Heat. So. It's all radiating heat. Everything on the ground when the ground yeah. is radiating yeah. at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So number two would be um, Mount Clarence King that I didn't quite summit, but I got within the activation zone, so I was still able to activate. I'm going to try to go back to that one this year, um, but that one is. Oh, if you if you go by trail, it's probably about 20 miles into the Sierra backcountry. Um, so it's a multi-day trip uh, to get there and get up the peak and back. And um, yeah, so so you know, o- overnight type preparation for that for a multi-day backpacking trip. And I was by myself on that one, flying solo. So I you know had to be a little bit extra careful that I didn't do something too stupid, uh, <laughs> had the Garmin in reach as a, a tool to call for help if needed. And 
Uh, didn't use my inReach on that trip, but I actually did help uh, another hiker use an inReach to call for help because they had badly <laughs> oh. sprained their ankle along oh, the trail. So. <laughs> okay. There's there's a good there's a good three video series of that one. Um, I'll post that in the chat here when I'm done talking. And then the last one I would say is um, a peak that I actually failed the first time I tried to get to it. Um, and it, it was a heinous bushwhack. It's, uh, there's also a video of that one. And that's, I think, one of those summits that I'm happy that I did and I did once. And I'm not going to go back to it unless that place burns to the ground <laughs> because it was an awful bushwhack to get up there. So uh, Re Dreamer says... After I activate a mountaintop, how long does it take to deactivate? Actually, that's a really good way of thinking about the year-long cycle for summits on the air. It's one year. You can go back to that summit again for points. So, Adam, are there yeah, any... Yeah, it's the calendar year. So calendar year, it, yeah. It resets on January 1st. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, calendar year. So if you want... Oh, that's yeah. a good point. So, Adam, would you... Uh, is there any, like... Uh, gear choices that you always have on you because i i know uh you brought something to my attention that i had not heard about until you mentioned it it's that like two person tent or single person tent thing that you can like drape over yourselves that you've activated under before right like that's a thing i've not really heard yeah, of until you mention it yep it's called a bothy bag and uh it's it's kind of like a tent rain fly with a draw cord around the bottom um, but with no poles, you, you just throw it over yourself and, and you are the, the support for it. And they, they work okay. They're, you know, they're intended to be an emergency shelter. And as such, they, they keep you dry from the rain, but, uh, they get pretty muggy in there, especially if you're crammed in there with, with other people. But, you know, be, beyond that, I think, you know, to me, the key things that I always bring are a, a first aid kit of... Uh, varying size. Um, well, the, I'll just say the 10 essentials and, and kind of sum it up with that. So first aid kit, extra food and water, uh, extra clothing, headlamp, uh, signal mirror, whistle, um, uh, potentially a fire starter, depending on where you're you're at and what's safe to, to have and use. Um, and then what else? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, methods of communication like the inReach and mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, kind of have your, your pace plan. I know you've gone over that before for how you're going to communicate in an emergency. But, uh, but yeah, the, I'd say the 10 essentials are kind of the core of all that. And then uh, tailoring your rig and uh, equipment for the task at hand. Well said. Well said. Very good. All right, uh, I, I need to make a quick pit stop. So what we're going to do is I want to go to the next person. Who wants to share their uh, their story? Is there anybody who has a hard poda or soda that they want to talk about? Let's cue it up. I've got a funny one for you. How long is the story? Could you could you could you milk short. it for pretty yeah. short? No, I, I need how something. Long do you want it to be? Yeah, I, I want it to be about three minutes. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, oh, I so can I can do, do a pit minutes. stop. That's okay. Easy. Three, give me, give me five, give me five minutes if you can do it. If, if, not, if not, I can probably pick something up. After. All right, there you go. All right, pick it up after me because I got to take a quick pit stop and I'll be right back because I want to hear all these stories because I think they're great. All right, so I'll, I'll be right back. Enjoy the memes, but you'll hear all the folks talking. So uh, take it away with a funny story. So I decided one day uh, to go and activate the Gloss Mountain State Park on top of the mountain. And I have an IC-706 Mark IIG, a DX Commander, Classic, an Infed Half Wave, and a, a sealed lead acid battery because I, that's what I've got. And, uh, you know, it's not a, it's, this is more like complaining uh, compared to uh, what he was just talking about. Uh, because I wasn't really prepared for what I was getting ready to do. Get up on top of the, the mountain, and it's all, I don't know, it's probably 250 steps, like metal steps up the side of this plateau. And it's nothing serious, but it, it's fun. And uh, so I get up there, and I am dying, because I am out of shape, and that was a sealed... Uh, 
14, 14 uh, amp hour lead acid um, AGM batteries out of, uh, I don't know what they're out of, some kind of power sport thing. And uh, it, it was a good time going up. I, I was dying though. It was killing me. So I got up there and put all the stuff up. And I start to activate, and I cannot figure out what is wrong. My 706 is getting uh, common mode current back into the radio every time I key up. And I can't get any people to respond. So I'm sitting up a few hundred feet up from the normal lay of the land near Fairview, Oklahoma, trying to get whoever I can get on 40, 20, I think I wound up on 20 because I figured it would be the easiest to get uh, people to come back to me. And so I'm, I'm talking and I'm getting nothing. Um, finally, some person out of Enid came back to me on 20 meters and I, I got them in the log. But basically we were at, it was during the middle of a solar storm and I had no idea that day that that was going to be that bad. I did get 10 contacts I had a person come up and ask me if I was talking to space people. Um, I love let's it. See what, uh, let's see what other what other crazy thing. There was two or three other people that a uh, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend walked past me, and they were up to no good. But I, you know, I'm not going to make judgment. They can do what they want to do. They're consenting adults, but. So they, were I made just, they were just doing contacts. it on the trail, or what are we talking about? Well, they, they walked past me. I knew what was getting ready to go happen. Oh. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm like the way, you, yeah. like all new consenting adults. Like, what are we talking about? We're talking about hiking. What is? <laughs> yeah, I, they just hiked past me on the trail. What was the other thing that was crazy? Oh, when I wound up activating, the last contact I made was on fourteen three four five upper side band, uh-huh. and the guy says. I can't believe you got a POTA activated on this frequency because apparently three, four, five is just like the 200 on, on uh, three, 40 four, meters. Five, no, I've never, I've, I've not experienced that. Uh, 313, 313 used to be pretty bad on 20 meters. Well, well the guy is telling me this. I did. I didn't have any clue. I just, I got my 10th contact and I was done. And, uh, but he said, yeah, I can't believe that you got any contacts at all on this. Cause this is like the Wild West on this frequency. And I'm like, okay, I got 10, so I'm done. He said, most people don't even have call signs when they're on this frequency. I'm like, okay. Okay. And then well, I had to walk back down the down the little mountain trail. But you did it. So thank you for sharing your story. And any gear choices or thing? Well, no, I mean, you were in the middle of a solar storm. So this is your normal gear pack loadout, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. It's what I usually use, but normally I don't walk anywhere. I just take it out of the car and throw it on a picnic table and go. But uh, and then I went and activated another park uh, after the solar storm died down. Wound up getting Alaska, so it was a nice. great day eventually. Nice. Well, I gotta tell you guys, I'm getting amazing DX to Europe right now, a ton right now. So if you're on FT8, get on 30 meters. It's it's pretty hot. And then a weird question from the Gaming Skulls. Hi, Hammer Radio Crash Horse. What happened to 145 4500 and 146 4500 Papa's Peak Earthquake and NASA channel? I don't know. Are you talking about the Papa network? Uh, and also, you didn't tell me where you're located. So that frequency is a line of sight frequency, meaning that if I'm outside of the range of that, I won't know. So was it active before there's all this context i'm not aware of so anyway i don't know i don't know all right who's next who wants to dive in with their hardest poda or soda activation just a real quick one my hardest poda activation surprisingly enough is my home park uh up here at lake sonoma in sonoma county one has no self service, so it's a little harder to self spot. I can self spot, you know, I can go to HF, find a free frequency, and, and then I have to switch back and forth between WinLink and the frequency and hope no one comes on over it between the time I send out a WinLink message. But I would say that's 
for now at least, my hardest POTA activation is my local park because no cell service, hard to spot, and it's quite interesting the propagation out of that park because it basically uh, it's on the lake bed and it's in a deep valley, so it's very interesting trying to get out of there both uh, geographically and radio wise on HF. Yep. Understood. Right on. Well, thank you for sharing that. Who wants to be next? I've got a fairly decent uh, soda activation that was that was quite interesting for me. All right, go for it. So, I was I I, I don't know how many overlanders we have in the chat or anything of the sort, but I've got a. 98 TJ that I run most of my, um, I guess, if you will, ham shack out of mm -hmm. with my IC705. And I decided, you know what, I want to do a soda activation at Mount, oh shoot, it's Colgen, Coshen, something like that, uh, okay. up here in Washington, about 9,000 feet in elevation. And, um, I went up, similar situation to what was happening with the other guy with major solar storm. You know, I was having trouble getting contacts on VHF and UHF channels. And I'm thinking, what the hell is wrong? Like, you know, I'm rocking an IC705 with my antenna going off the Jeep at 9,000 feet. Like, maybe something, I'm having a grounding issue, something's going on. Um, and while I'm trying to kind of troubleshoot, while also, you know, queuing up to try and get contacts and stuff like that. My CB goes off on channel eight and I'm okay. thinking, what the hell? Like what, why is a CB going off at 9,000 feet when I can't even get my VHF UHF to go anywhere for me? And it's some dude down in SoCal. I was thinking, damn, it's Josh yeah. <laughs> on CB. On CB, Channel 8. I'm like, what the heck? So, you know, I, I run over to the Jeep because I hear it going off. And I completely forgot that I left the CB on. The guy goes, yeah, I'm down in SoCal, like down in San Diego area, like middle of town, you know. And he kind of like went out for a second and came back. He goes, yeah, so I'm, I'm rocking a uh, Cobra something out of his Crown Vic. And he said, I think I just went under some power lines, so I couldn't get you for a second. But, you know, whenever I told him where I was at and where, when he told me where he was at, he was like, are you rocking an amplifier? And I said, no, I'm rocking a 15-watt Uniden 540 Pro out of my 98 Wrangler with the battery turned off. Like, <laughs> no alternator, nothing. And I'm just sitting up there just queuing up on a CB with my ICOM essentially down <laughs> right. on the back of it. Right. Like, what the hell is going on? So that was probably one of the most interesting soda activations I've ever had, um, just being in overlanding. I mean, I'm doing soda activations constantly up and down mountains and stuff like that, but it's mainly just for end-to-end -end communications with people that I'm with. But <laughs> I thought it was interesting that, you know, I was catching people from SoCal when I'm up in northern Washington, you know, off of CB. So, yeah, that was that was probably one of the most interesting soda activations I've ever had. Adam is uh, is is chatting me in the background for the soda tomorrow. So, Adam, I will I will bring your antenna and a uh, and a, a a mast, and I'll I'll set that up. We'll try and get on forty. But I have the I, I'm bringing the KH one. That's that's what I'm planning on doing this whole thing on. So, all right. Oh, Josh, while I've got you, I've got yeah. a quick question for you. Okay. So, I am actually going on a deployment here in about a month to Iceland, and you know. Ah, uh, yes, the, the war torn go, tundra of Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right <laughs> so i did have a question i'm bringing my icom ic705 with the backpack and um several i want to say homemade antennas slash several antennas that i have uh in my arsenal yeah but it put yourself in my shoes you're in iceland for six months or you know any various other places that you might go what would you do with radio 
just to occupy your time for six months they you know all of your downtime that you have for the next six months what i don't even do? know so like you're a single guy right you're single i'm assuming yeah eh, i got a girlfriend but yeah and she's just like yeah man get the hell out of here for six months it's cool like what's going on there <laughs> i guess that's well, a side question off, we both live full-time in an rv with a dog so oh my like, god like fine. so so it's it's very hard for me to answer your question because our lifestyles are so diametrically different. Which, by the way, I respect the RV lifestyle. I would do that if I could, but I can't because I got all these responsibilities, children, the wife, and everything, and she's not RV living type at all. Well, okay. and I was going to go back to the comment you made. You, you know, you got the electric F-150. I'm rocking the 08 F-350. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man, I respect. I'm, I'm good. So uh, this is a really good. Will you have access to the internet? Spotty. I can find the button. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, so um, I would I would probably make sure you had a GPS dongle, like one of those cheap USB dongles. Um, your laptop. No, I have hands on several of those. <laughs> okay, uh, your your laptop, and then I would uh. Well, I mean, I would just make a ton of contacts with people. I mean, that's the first thing. You're in Iceland. Make a bunch of contacts, single sideband. Um, you, in six months, you could probably pick up Morse code. Like, So bring a key with you just in case you decide to try it. Um, there's a ton of opportunity out there. I mean, if you got time, you got a lot of downtime, you can learn Morse code. You, you, you'd I was be... about to say, I don't have, I don't know a wink of Morse code besides the basics of SOS, you know, but you know you, you got a point there i could actually start learning cw a little bit yeah because if you got all this downtime where you're like don't have a lot of pressures to do other things dude morse code learning morse code is going to be really valuable you it's know it's hilarious whenever i bring my uh backpack my icon backpack on deployment and people go are you trying to talk to the plane with that? It's like, well, yeah, I could talk to the plane, but um, mm -hmm. that's not what it's for. <laughs> I, I would I would try and run JS8 and leave a station running, like leave a station running that you can receive traffic consistently and then, you know, work some of the JS8 nets, uh, get Winlink going before you. So all these things are things you do before you depart, right? So make sure you have Winlink running. Make sure you have a JS8 capable type of rig, whatever it is. Uh, and then that, so here's the thing. Make sure if you're going to do any of these modes like JS8, make sure you can run it like 24 seven. So let that thing run all night long and then come back and make sure the application didn't crash. That's the big thing is that on Windows, JS8 call sometimes just, you know, craps the bed and dies on you. And you're like, what the hell? I, I had messages. What's going on? So that's a thing. It's like how how reliable are these are is your communications platform, right? So well, yeah, yeah. And and to that point, I mean, you'd be surprised. I'm active duty military, Navy for that matter, but I've got probably one of the cushiest jobs ever, where I just kind of sit in. Are you Air Force? And, yeah, damn near for Navy purposes. Yeah. Easy, okay. Easy. Yeah. He's a, he's a radar guy. He's a radar guy in the Navy. <laughs> I'm not an aircraft mechanic, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, AMP. That's my dad. My dad was an AMP. Nice, nice. Yeah, but basically, like, my housing situation is usually, like, a five-star hotel that's funded by the government. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you should... Uh, so, you got to figure so out how to get to no San problem. Clemente Island. Since you're Navy, figure out how to get to San Clemente Island. That's the That's the radio spot, man. You set up a radio on that island, and everybody wants to make a contact with you. It's a dream situation because it's super rare. I have rare. heard so many things about that island. Yeah. Not radio-related, but man. I've, <laughs> I've been there. I've been there, and so is K6ARK. We've both been there. Last year, we went there. Oh, God. That's I got some comments. Uh, so does that help? Does that help answer your questions at all? Oh yeah, it does. Oh yeah. All right, right on, man. I, I would say, dude, learn CW. Seriously, it will, it will, va you will get so much value out of that, and it'll save your budget. It'll, it'll like, it, it will bring your budget down on radio because you don't need a lot of radio to do CW, and you could get like, and it will reduce your pack weight. It will reduce everything if you can go CW. Straight up, Lord. I mean, I'm, I'm rocking that 
Icom backpack. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, the yeah, yeah. IP705, and that's literally my which is, ham shack in a bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which know? is a fa- it's a fantastic radio. You can do a ton of stuff with it, no question. But like CW is just like oh, so good for that sense. Like oh, pack yeah. weight. Go ahead, comment. Or I think there was like two comments. So uh, I think Mike was the second comment. Who was the first one? I think it was um, me. It is me. Um, I've deployed, and I understand your, uh, but I was always busier than you could imagine. Never could have pulled that one out. But uh, there are 35 POTUS sites there at Iceland. Whoa. Um, 35? I think that's what it said. It's, it's only got 33 entities listed here, but yeah, so I'll go with 33 then. And okay, uh, give me the link. I, de- <laughs> I definitely need to know this. Uh, go go to app page. So so let let actually you know what let let's do that. That's a fun little thing we can do. So we're gonna go you know, to the soda before atlas. Before we go down that tangent, while we're going through there, um, yeah. The, the only other thing I've, I've got to recommend is you've got access to an APO address, correct? I do, yeah. He's got, got his CAC card. Anything, He's got his CAC card. Come on. Yeah, and, and, but but if you have to buy anything, it has to be sent to somewhere. So you have to know if something breaks, you have to know of a way to get it to you from Amazon to your location. I was about to say, it's either Amazon or family or friends that send me or stuff. Ham, ham radio outlets. Ham radio outlet can do FPO? Why couldn't they? It's just like sending to a mailbox. So <laughs> that, that's why I'm telling you this. If you need something, hmm. pack two because uh, two is one and one is none. Bro, and Greenland. They, I'm just saying. Oh, that's Iceland. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's that. That sounds like a heck of an adventure for a, a Navy guy. Wait, where, uh, oh, where are you yeah. going? Where are you going? I, uh, Greenland, so, right? Or Iceland? No. Where are you going again? Iceland. Iceland. Uh, what airplane do you cruise? That's the only other question I had. Uh. Oh, I, my thumb slipped off the button. Um. We crew the P-8 Alpha. It's the predecessor to the P-3 Charlies. You know, I was getting ready to say it sounds like a P-3 Orion job, but I'm a F-16 crew chief. That's why look I'm at, retired. That's why I ask these questions. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Look at, you look know, at, we're, we're a little bit better than you guys, just, you know. <laughs> for everybody. Fire. More, more relaxed. How about that? Exactly. A little more relaxed. For everybody watching, look at the Soda Atlas for Iceland. That's insane. There's so think... many soda it could spots. Be Iota too, right? There's so many locations, man. It's insane. I'll tell That's you how lax crazy. the PA guys are. A buddy and I are actually loading up our mountain bikes onto the planes. So <laughs> we get ready to take off. Oh, dude, that's sweet. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Take the I love it. With you. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. You can go oh, anywhere yeah. with that. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I'm bringing the 7105 on my back, and we're going to go mountain bike a summit. Might as well. Uh, oh, yeah, I that, hate that. That sounds great. And you're getting paid to do it. That's the awesome part. $129 a day, but who's counting? Ooh. So have you applied for your license from uh, Iceland yet? Oh, yeah. You need to that get That was your... my next question. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, and I for, didn't know for, about that. Yeah, you did. Sure? And for for three sure. months, for three months, it's free. But after that, it is uh, you. If if you're going longer than three months, you do have to apply. Jody did drop a link for the information for that in the chat. Yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be awesome. I, I did the same thing. I'm looking at the site now. I hate sometimes photo maps pisses me off, man. Because I I have Iceland selected here. I, I just did the same thing. You have to zoom in to about three times the view, almost city level view, and then zoom back out and it will load everything. Oh, there it is. Uh, we got it. We got it. Did uh, they add a bunch of parks to parks on the air recently? I got to yes, tell you, I got to tell you, uh, Summits on the Air is going to be where it's at. Are you going out of Reykjavik or where are you going? Where are you out of? Out of Calf. Calf. Where's Calf? So uh, what side uh, of the island? Reykjavik is almost dead center, northern side of the island. 
Reykjavik is is southwest. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Southwest, middle of the island. What are you Same talking thing, about? Yeah. It's literally it's about 100 miles off, you know. No, it's, it's literally <laughs> the most <laughs> southwest that you can be on the yeah. island. So I'm more, I'm even more southwest than that. So Keflavik is like oh Keflavik is literally on the peninsula. Western. It's on the tip of the peninsula. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, we have to cross check that against. Literally, okay, check this out. You've got like, like right outside. You've got uh, multiple one pointers. It looks like. Yeah, you got mul, and they don't look well. They look like harsh uh, tundra <laughs> land. But oh, dude, somebody's got a, a two a three band mountain topper on that thing. Let's go. That's awesome. Well, That's I will say awesome. I took a uh, Volkswagen Tiguan through those harsh mountain lands that you're talking about and it's all just volcanic rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, this looks like this looks like a ton of like drive up one pointers. That's super cool. Oh, yes. Dude, get go nuts, dude. Go nuts. I IS0016 is the I couldn't pronounce it National Reserve is the closest poda for you. That's hilarious. That's awesome, dude. And and what, what volcanoes can you use soda from? Volcanoes on the air. Let's go. <laughs> All of them. Might as well. Might as well. Hey, Josh, I have something I want to touch on if we run out of stuff to talk about. Well, I haven't even talked about my hardest sodas and podas, but uh, yeah, go for it. Well, uh, it's regarding Poda and the current changes they're doing. Uh yes, please go ahead yeah. and hit upon that. <laughs> okay. Uh as of three days ago, uh the admins posted an update and I'll drop the link in the chat. All park designators are going to be switched over to the international standards. So all Canadian parks were some of the first ones to be switched over in the last 48 hours here. They are no longer Victor Echo uh, parks. Like uh, Simon activates Victor Echo 5539. It is Charlie Alpha 5539. For Canadian. Uh, US, correct. And uh, U.S. parks will no longer be Hilo, they will be U.S. for United States. And this is trying to line things up better with international standards. And they are also going to be doing a few other adjustments to the database pages of the parks to better fit more accurate and more important information on the park pages themselves. So this is going to be a long time coming. All the stats, all the stats, the first operator for the park, the scores, if you will, all, all the stats are going to stay the same. We're They're resetting changing. the scoreboards. We're resetting. No. Everything's a new park. No. Everything's a new park. Guys, go. No. Nope. Run. Go. Nope. It's a new park. <laughs> Everybody, first time activation tomorrow. Go. Uh, I, 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 wish that, I wish that were the case. I'd hit up three parks in the next 24 hours. Um, everything's going to stay the same. You might you might see some award changes going on. So some of the awards might disappear from your profile page, but they will come back. That's a couple of the things that are going on. And I'll drop a link to the whole public release information docket that they did three days ago on all this in the chat. But I figured it was important enough. We should probably bring it up. And call signs are, are uh, international uh, designator so why switch to us from k because us is the uh standard designator for united states uh, not no. kilo k, k k is also so for for us call sign. kazakhstan so, was pissed don that's the answer kazakhstan sure, was sure pissed mean. they're pissed it doesn't matter what? i don't know it doesn't uh, matter. It, it doesn't but it seems seems like a a lot of extra work for well no, see, but here's no the thing that then. that uh that Frank actually mentioned so uh we are all been using hammers a lot lately and oh, the yeah, developer yeah. of hammers actually Don you might have been the one to mention it I don't know who mentioned it but somebody did the developer of hammers has been kind of quiet in the amateur radio space recently yeah Jared and if Jared doesn't update the uh the system to work. So I have a thought. Here's my thought. I don't know when you type in the park, 
it usually makes that little pop up and it registers. I don't know that that's going to break that, but it could because I have a feeling that a lot of what Jarrett does is pulling from the Poda database and not something stored locally. So a lot of this stuff could be just a moot point. Like if you, instead of entering K something and it's US something, it might all just be seamless. So if he did it that way, which would be the smart developer way of doing it, instead of coding something locally, then we're good. Like we're good. There's no problem. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, he did not do it that way. It is an op that that's why you can access this stuff in HamRS offline. You know, you have no cell service, you can access it. Oh no! He has a database, and that is why the five-digit park numbers have been such such a bone of contention with people using Hammers because it will not. Where is he pull. at? Has anybody reached is out to him? Jared has all but abandoned the project, and from my understanding, it is. Now, this is my understanding, and it's not speculation. It's just how I have understood what has gone on. He has all but abandoned the project, and it is vaporware unless somebody wants to try and pick it up from him, get his permission to use the code, and start adding on and expanding it. Well, if he's abandoned it, then where does the four ninety nine go when you buy it off the... Uh, um... <laughs> he still gets no, it. He still gets it. God, he still gets it. Calm down. Calm down. Yeah, that's, that's a legitimate... We don't, we don't have to... No, we, we don't have to... We don't even have to ask it. We know where it's going. But, <laughs> he's getting yeah, it. Just, just to clarify, his uncle is in a ham club, I think, with Jason Ham Radio 2.0 and, right. and or Frank. So it would seem like that's probably the person to ask. No, I mean I can just message him. I think I, I might even have his phone that number. Is accurate though, because I try to log either on my uh, MacBook when I when I haven't had uh, cell service or then connected, and it doesn't queue that way. Um, also, at the I same time, I can I think I can literally message this person because. I think I have his phone number even. So I, I think mm -hmm. I, I, I will I will I will ask him to see what's going on there. I love I, I'll, his program, so give I'll, him all I'll, the props because it's great. Yeah, I, I no, wouldn't no, do no. it at eleven thirty at night, but sure. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I absolutely love hammers. I, I use it, I'll continue to use it no matter what. But yeah, I, I'm it seems like he has just Falling off the map with the program and the responses in the HamRS uh, forum community are to the point of he's more or less abandoned it, and that's coming from well, some of the moderators there. So, so I, I can I can definitely say the developer of JSA Call has pretty much abandoned it. That that's a proven yeah. track record. I I don't know that Jared has abandoned Hammers. Also, with that said, we don't know that it's necessarily going to fail yet we don't know that for sure let's not all go y2k bug yeah. on this one we don't know that it's gonna have a problem because i thought that and what frank says is true you can use it offline but i believe he originally had explained that he downloads that onto the uh the system you're using right so you're connected online it downloads it so there's a so possibility so then why don't the five part five to park numbers pop up properly now know. that could that could be a that could be a coding issue because you are the, a number about the field yeah right you're the talking field about the is field. four digits but the five. database is a, a slightly different and frank you could be 100 percent right i'm not saying that i'm just saying that he had expressed at one time that he was downloading the data from the from the site i got I got hit today. I got hit with three operators at two parks, and one of the parks is a five-digit digit park. And I was like, "Oh my goodness, how we how we handling this one?" It was it was a fun it was a fun three contacts. It was three activators. It was pretty cool. And I have posted the link to the Poda uh, change doc if you want to bring that up to show people, or they can just click on it and view it at their leisure. Well, well I don't know why I'm, about... I, I don't know why I'm implying that I'm that special. I have to believe that the Poda guys have contacted Jarrett on this one and being like, "Hey man, are what are we about doing?" W three W three AAX, right, or something like that. Uh, Jared. Yeah, the, yeah, the developer. Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it, wasn't he like one of the founding founding fathers of Poda, or was it someone else? Mm -hmm. No, he's not. He was just a developer for the uh, Hammers application. The redheaded guy, yeah. right? 
Uh, I think I, I I I did a live stream with him. I did a live stream with him. Yeah, no, I don't, and, I don't really yeah. remember that. He wears glasses. I'm trying to picture his face. Where know? are we go, Shane? Where are we going with this? Are we playing Guess I'm Who? Is to... uh, no. <laughs> are we playing Guess Who? What are we doing? No, I'm trying to bring back my memories. Just trying okay. to remember who you're all talking about. Are we no. on 80 meters right now? Are we on 80 meters? As long as we're talking, not talking about Jared from Subway, I think we're good. <laughs> no, it's not. Him. That's no, Jared no versus Jarrett. That's a different yeah. different name. No glasses, and he's brunette. Okay, got it. My bad. <laughs> You're good, man. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll mention my two hardest uh, sodas and potas. So, um, honestly, today's pota was kind of difficult, but uh, I had good gear on, so that was the thing. I had lots of wind. It was raining, uh, but I had the QRP station. I was getting rained on. Not. It was like a drizzle. California drizzle. It wasn't. I, I got really lucky, so I was in between the heavy downpour. So when you watch the video, I'll show you the drive in, which it was just super heavy, 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 and then it opened up. But then I got out of there and I I did a pan around to show the clouds coming in. I'm like, I got to get the hell out of here. So that was that was that was pretty nice. Uh, the Utah one, again, not so. Inclement conditions when it comes to poda or soda is totally just bypassed depending on how good your gear is and what you plan for. And if you if you planned appropriately, then you're good to go, right? So this my my next story is my first soda attempt. My first soda attempt was a failure and it's on my YouTube channel. I, I went out there with another person and I brought my uh my DJI Phantom drone, which I think we tethered to the backpack of my buddy. And then I had all this radio gear. I had a, a, a QRP radio. I had a pocket tuner. I had a power meter. I had a battery pack. And the battery pack then sleds. So I was carrying a solid lead acid battery. Um, and I and I humped that all the way to the top. It was It was Smith Mountain. Which is still my my soda kryptonite, because it's like it's a day it's a day hike, but it's a it's a brutal trip because you get to the top, and it's a false it's a false summit, and then it's just a scramble to the actual summit, and it's it's a little bit of bushwhacking, but not nearly as bad as uh, K six ARKs. This is my first soda attempt was this summit because I wanted I didn't want a one pointer I wanted like a four pointer i wanted like middle like mid like right in there and i was like i'll just get something off of azusa azusa is in the san gabriel mountain range and so i drive up there and man that hike that whole day just kicked my butt so bad and so once i get a little bit more confident with cw i'm going back there to conquer that mountain because man that was my hardest situation it was everything i did was the wrong way everything i brought was too much everything was just extra upon extra upon extra i went full boy scout mode like if you were a, a younger scout and you just started throwing crap in your bag that's what i was doing i was just way over the top everything was out of control and everything i know now it's like just totally removes all of that as being a thing that uh, you should do so yeah <laughs> it's like why'd i do that yeah 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 there's so many like every activation i've had since that i hearken back to that activation and go am i overpacking am i overdoing this am i doing blah 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 it's and every time anytime i hit even a a nuance that I am, I'm like, uh, leave it, leave it. We don't need it. Leave it. We don't need it. My first uh, poda was similar, and it was the most difficult. Yeah? What happened? So um, I was relatively new amateur at that point, and my first HF radio was a KH3. I think I was operating digital at home previous to that, and I had turned the mic bias off on the KH3. So I was just yelling into a microphone that would not transmit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and all right, all right. 
I was, and so I was like, all right, well, what, what do you do at this point? So I reset the radio, which I didn't have the configure file from, from Ellicraft to be able to input that back into the radio. So after that, I was like, there's gotta be something else in amateur radio because this is, this is not. And so it was a great lesson learned. And I think that's one of the, every time you go to the field, um, I make little notes as to what do I need to add, delete, remove, um, to my kit, um, to improve my operation. I love it. So what was the, what was the thing you needed to add, remove, delete, or, you know, or add, I don't know. What, what is it? What was the thing? Well, for that was know how to operate my radio. Sure. Um, and, um, what that was. Uh, that is a big part of it. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, I, I, I am, uh, I'm a person who has too much confidence, like just generally too much confidence. I think I could just wit my way through most problems because I've been lucky that way in, in, in a lot of ways. Whether I was competent or not, it's not the question, but there are situations where technical feasance, technical feasibilities, you can't like, if you don't have a coax connector, you can't confidence your way through it. Like you have to have that thing. So that's why it's like, I, I have to acknowledge my own brain in saying, yeah, dude, you're too confident. Just throw more connectors in all the bags. Make sure you got like a hunk of wire if you have to build an antenna, which has happened. I've done that. Uh, and you'd be surprised. Like you, you can get you can get through a lot with like a multi tool in the field and uh, a bit of tape and a little wire on a on a coax connector. I've done that where you literally have a a tiny little wire shoved in the center pin, and you got a a radial on the coax shield, and you tape it all together, and you're like, okay, we did something here. We're good. <laughs> Maybe let's try it. And then you'd start adjusting the end to make it resonant. I've I've done that before. I've literally done that. Well, you know, and I think that's super important. It's so many people oftentimes have to have the exact resonance or um, say it won't work because of whatever reason. My question is, did it work? Were you able to pass the message or were you able to get through? And that I think that's a really super important part. Uh, Yeah, I mean... It, what are you doing, buddy? No, you can't just... <laughs> My son has decided to... That's heavy, man. <laughs> okay. Well, we may lose a radio here shortly, but... My son has entered the chat. You don't have headphones, hey? You can't hear anything. I don't care. Wait, aren't there headphones in my room? I don't know. That reminds me, I have to bring my headphone splitter because if I'm uh so tomorrow, tomorrow we're gonna do CW, and I I can't forget to grab my pole and the K6ARK antenna because I'm gonna run the uh, KH1. The KH1 whip uh, generally will only take you to 20 meters ish with the tuner. You can't do 40, so I I will have to pack a long wire because we're gonna try and do 40 meters with uh, K6ARK. I'll let uh I'll let the other guys know that I'm I'm going with, but. Uh, I need the splitter so that I can have somebody tapped into the line because you you generally need earbuds of some kind. You got oh you got pod oh Ed, okay, sit, sit down sit down. Edison is wearing podcast headphones right now, so he is podcast royalty. He's got mommy's headphones on. Yay! Did you you literally grab like the bet and you got them backwards? Flip them. They're yeah. There you go. It was like the best headphones we have in the house. Okay. Gotta be just like mom. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. He... I just took a shower. You just took a shower? Thank yes. you for telling everybody. It's very good. Very important. Yeah. We're gonna watch a movie now, right? That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to wrap up here, I think. No. Let me be on the Discord. You are on the Discord.
Can, can I say something real quick, John? Yeah, go ahead. So uh, I went to, and a lot of other people have heard this, but anyway. So I went to a ham fest to, this morning and talked to Frank and was, you know, there. And I actually won a radio. So What'd you win? I won an ICT-10 ICOM. Uh, that's the handheld, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I feel happy. I mean, it's it's nice to win things. Exactly. And I did I did have a question, but if you're uh, leaving, that's uh, that's fine. No, go ahead with the question, and then we're going to wrap up. I think here. Well, I I don't even know if we can fix it. It it's a it is a quote ham radio th related thing. Okay. So I got a I got an icon or a Cisco phone for the ham shack hotline. For and the, what, okay. Yep. Yeah. When when I plug it in. Um, Can I change your it's mouse? not booting up. It it like comes up with red lights and orange and green lights. But it, if it does ever come all the way up and boot up, then it'll be up for about oh forty five seconds to a minute, and then it just a red big red light comes on and the whole thing powers off. Does anybody I have? So I don't have would, ham radio yeah. hotline. So somebody that knows. Yeah, I was just curious. My dog is now barking because you left the door open. I would say check that power supply for that Cisco. Make sure you got uh, enough amperage going to it. Make sure it's the one that came with it. No, Why? They don't. that's the thing. They don't ship those with the power supplies. I don't know why, but every one of them that I've seen available does not come with the power supply. And so what they're saying is, oh, well, just go on Amazon and get a two amp, five volt power supply. That's all you need. And by the way, I do have POEs what? around here all over the place. It will not fire up on POE. You see, will you sit down? <laughs> no. You have nothing to say. What do you want to add to the conversation? Do you know. know how to fix the ham radio hotline? What the heck is that? Would you drop uh, the model number of that in the uh, in the Discord? Uh, maybe uh, I can take a look, too. It's 525G2, but sure. All right. Well, we obviously have to get out of here because he's he he's not helping to answer any questions. So it's movie time. Yeah, I think it's movie time. All right. No, leave it. Give me the. Well, what's the movie? Um, I think it's uh. New I am. Dawn. I think it's I am Legend. Mm. Ooh. Right Which, on. In no, it's night. it's not right on. It's horrible. I don't want to watch I Am Legend because I. Like it has one of the scenes that rocks me to my core is that dog scene, absolutely just wrecks oh. me. I can't, like I, oh, it's so bad for me to watch that. It's it's the it's yeah. the same it's the same as uh, Saving Private Ryan with the knife scene. That is like just, oh, it's so difficult for me. Damn to it, watch. Papa. Yeah, that's a hard one to watch. Yeah, oh, I forgot about the dog scene. Yeah. So it's not as bad as the uh, last Avatar live action, dude. Uh, my kids started watching it. I have not, uh, which uh, which is crazy because what was it? The um, what's the One Piece? The One Piece live mm -hmm. action was actually pretty good. It was actually they they did a good job at it. But the all star cast that they put together for the Avatar season and it's like it's not good it's not good at all right and it, i like it, it, it it's yeah go ahead sorry i mean don did you watch avatar did you watch it the yeah, full I've the tried. original I, no the original uh, the original oh yeah yeah oh yeah it's the, amazing the it, sure. it's amazing yeah, yeah. it i i am like i i love japanese animation love it but mm -hmm. uh avatar is some of the best cartoon stuff that you can watch and if you and if you add legend of korra legend mm -hmm. of korra is so good every like every one of those episodes i've watched multiple times oh, i yeah. love i love avatar i love it and <laughs> the, the the netflix version is not it are you yeah. watching netflix I, uh, avatar uh, you like it on netflix on episode? netflix right now i'm watching the uh this thing where they they go into this dungeon and they're trying to rescue their friend that's got eaten by a dragon and they they went in there without any food and so they're they're 
eating food they're they're making food out of the monsters they kill and i don't know why i find that interesting but i just i'm loving that 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 particular uh, anime what what anime it, it's just and i can't remember the name of it right now I, i'm sorry but it's it's one where like they they go into a dungeon and they're proceeding down the dungeon to rescue this friend or this sister of one of the guy, people that got eaten by a red dragon and so they're going down these levels of the dungeon and uh, they didn't bring any food and so they are making food out of the monsters that they kill it's and just like I, a a D, D red dragon um i i can't say it's D D because it's anime right oh, okay so, but when yeah. you say red dragon that's immediately what i think no, right me down. too i get it i get it and there's a wizard at the very bottom of the dungeon and it, it, they they but i'm always fascinated by how they incorporate like dungeons in anime because there's one where like they have these towers that just are there in all these big cities and the big in the every one of them is considered a dungeon and you know it's a but anyway i i, I just love uh something where you're going into a dungeon to take on monsters. Have you ever the, watched the, Berserk, Don? Are you a Berserk fan? I have started it, but it's, I think at the time I was pulling it down from somewhere, and I believe it's now on Netflix. Stop. What are you doing? So after, I haven't yeah, watched after. it. Don, um, I think that's Delicious in Dungeon. Yep, oh, that, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, right. She does, she does. Are you watching? Okay, so Edison is apparently watching Delicious in Dungeon. What would you say? Is it a good show? No, I just saw it on Netflix. It looks weird. I saw the itch of it. It is weird. It is it weird. Is That's why I like it. It's weird. It's very weird. Yes. <laughs> okay. saw... Live review, guys. There you I saw go. the intro. Okay, yeah. uh, Delicious Dungeon yeah, or Dungeon it's, Delicious? It's delicious in Dungeon. dungeon. Okay. But it's really it's good. very weird. It's very mm -hmm. weird. There we go. All right. And they're they're releasing they're releasing episodes weekly, and so, like, every week I'll come back in. Oh, new episode. So it's not like they – you can't go and just flat binge it. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to every episode. I, I don't know why. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. It's wait, wait, wait. It's, not yet, not yet. All right, it's it's too long. We got to go. So Discord, thank uh, everybody, friends. Wait. Thank you so much. I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. It's not time. Thank you. They'll still hear you. Everybody will still hear you. Just stop. All right. Thank you, everybody on Discord. We got to go though, because this is gonna you know be too much thank you everybody 73 all right. 73 josh and i hope your week goes better stop it's not time yet all right see ya thank you and thank you don i appreciate that all right no i'll tell i'll tell you when just relax all right guys uh this is it we're we're wrapping things up D uh edison wants to play the uh the 3d printed death whistle okay you did a bad job. okay let me let me see Does that sound scarier? No. No? Let me do it. Okay, go ahead. I can do it better. You just sound like you're playing a train whistle. Nobody cares about that. All right, guys. Take it easy. Thank you for watching. 70. You stop. Nobody cares. Terrible. That's not this doesn't sound scary at all. Now you got all your spit in it. Nice. Wait, how do you It just sounds like a regular whistle now. What'd you do to this thing? Take it. It's yours. <laughs> it just sounds like a whistle. Okay, let's get a spit out. Machu Picchu.
I don't think Edison's gonna be able to handle I Am Legend. I I don't I don't think that he can stay up for that. We're gonna hope he falls asleep before the dog scene. I don't think Ben can handle it either because oh my god, we've had some dog trauma in the past, so. Yeah, um, I'm not looking forward to this, but uh, we're doing it for the podcast. You guys voted for it. And if uh, you'd like to vote on what we watch next, go to the Ham Radio Crash Course podcast. Go to the Ham Radio Crash Course podcast and follow the link to the vote page where you can submit your own movies. But please, please, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose this music now. Please only add movies that don't exist because there's a ton of movies that are already there. You can vote on. Oh, now the next sun's in here. So there you go. And yes, we watch them. We review them on the podcast. And you should watch if you haven't. All right. Enjoy the memes. What am I looking at? Geometry? Oh, parabola. My son is showing me a parabola. All right, guys. Take it easy. 73.